Just one arrow, sir, please. Just the singular, thank you. Oh, just a little bit more so I can have 300, please. Just a tiny little bit more. Just, uh, yeah, there we go. Oh my God. There it is. It's a popped above. Zinked. Why can't I jump over this wall? I'm actually so troll. Dude, I can't strafe over that? This map is terrible. He's got the force of nature. This is the, wh where the fuck did this guy go? Please flash me. Please. 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 Just do what the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is... Dude. Hub medics are so insanely bad. It's ridiculous.
No. Listo, me dos años. Yes. I know what that means. I'm extremely cultured. Yeah, multilingual fragger. I don't lost the pub today, it's just too easy. No, I just started my stream. So, I'll do it soon. I'm just trying to not start too fast in case anybody misses it. I've seen the video of TF2. What? I don't know what that means. <clears throat> oh my god, yeah, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub, dude. I really appreciate it, number 35. Thank you for your support. You may now speak, by the way. <laughs> What's up, number four? You, you may also speak. Watch out though, Steve, you spoke without me addressing you first, so next time just think twice before you speak. Make sure that I okay it first. The worst thing this list ever did was put me at number two. Yeah, no problem, it's all good. <laughs> number four, he's speaking without permission. Yeah, that's a little bit of a yikes. I have not seen that TF2 video. set up.
Should I do like the entire fucking screen? I should maximize the text so the entire... Can't see like the stupid TF2 sidebar and shit. This is for, like waiting for like the... Ch <laughs> what is go- dude, I right, get me out of here. What the fuck is going on? They sure should be in competitive. <laughs> Some Junior. Good night. Some beard. I don't think I have an awesome beard. No. My tip is just you let it grow. Really no other tip that exists. Hold her diff. to play Valorant. I haven't played Valorant in a while. The clipping in this game is so bad. It happens all the time. Uh, okay. We can get started. I got nothing else to do. Okay. No. You're better up there. Make this a little bit less big. I guess I can. I hate the TF2 fucking TFTV sidebar. It's actually so annoying. All right, whatever. The list hasn't even been out for a week. The fuck are you on? All right, so what did we leave off on? Uh, who was 51? 
Oh, right, Wonderwall. Right, right, right. Okay. So, uh, we left off on good old Wonderwall number 51. Moving to the top 50, I didn't really expect Destro to be here. I feel like Destro is a weird pick. I'm always just super biased against the boomers. Um, but I'm surprised to see him at number 50 because I thought he would just be higher with the way that the list was shaping up to be before because he's just sort of like a superior boomer to a lot of the boomers. I'm not. See, that's the thing. I'm not a boomer. That's the craziest thing is if you guys think of my RSTF2 as boomer, then you literally don't even know who these players are. Um, but Destro was like an early, yeah, like he only played for two years, but he was a really good demo man early on where like, it's hard to come into a game and be really good, like off, off the bat and kind of lead other players like down, down the right path in terms of your gameplay. So like you have to give people like Destro props for sure, because he was the best demo man like before. You know, like the the Bannies and the Platts and the, I don't know, who, whoever else played like Demo in the small interim before uh, before Banny came out onto the scene. But you have to give like Destro some props for that. Uh, but at the same time, 50 definitely seems pretty high in my opinion, but also kind of low for what the rest of the list was was uh, looking at because there are definitely some boomers in like the 60s and the 70s or something like that that are way worse than Destro. So, I mean, I think it's a little bit much to be top 50 all time, but whatever. Showstopper number 49. See, like Show played forever too. Show, Show played from 2014 to 2018 and 2020, and that's all an invite. Showstopper as like an actual player who played the game, played the game before I played the game. He was on, like, the Knights of Bax. Thanks for this Trish Prime stuff, by the way. Showstopper was on, like, the Knights of Goku before I even played, like, competitive TF2. So he's been around for literally forever. Um, this is just, like, his invite years, which is a small sample size of, like, how long he's been in the community um, altogether. So Showstopper, number 49. I think he deserves a little bit higher of a placement than 49 if Destro's going to be 50. Um, but this is all kind of hazy anyway, because, you know, to to measure, like, the 49th player against the 50, 50th player is, like, pretty hard. So, I mean, Showstopper, pretty solid player. Uh, 49 is, is, I guess, I guess. Kozen, 48. Uh, I, I find it really weird on this list where, like, every medic has to fulfill, like, a certain, like spot on the list like every single time you go to like one installment of 10 there like has to be like one medic on it like as if playing medic like gives you like it's obviously hard to measure medics because they don't frag and they don't have like outstanding individual plays and stuff for the most part at least back then but it's just like weird how every single installment has to have like a certain medic in it um but, like, as far as, like, ranking goes, like, Kozen 48, like, Kozen seems to be maybe a little bit too high based on, like, what he actually accomplished in the game. Like, four seasons played. He had, like, a perfect season or whatever. Um, but he played, like, four seasons. Um, and he was definitely, like, probably the, the best overall medic or, like, in contention for the best overall medic, like, when he played. Um... But, like, in terms of, like, a career, I think, like, 404 accomplished more. Yo, what's up, number five? I think, uh, like, yeah, like, 404 accomplished more than Kozen. So it's just, like, kind of kind of weird. It, I feel like the medics in, in this list are just sort of, like, evenly spaced out. And uh, they just took, like, whoever was, like, their favorite medic and put them in front of other medics or something like that. <clears throat> um. 47 try see like try is one of those players where 
I like agree with this placement from like a skill perspective. But Try also didn't really play for that long. Like he has two years active, played five seasons, playoffs four times. I was on his team uh, one of the times we went to LAN. Um, and we were actually pretty good that year. Uh, that year is actually really stupid because that's the year that the quick fix came out. And when we were playing as like the tryhards in the regular season when the quick fix wasn't allowed, we were like the second seed. So we were like losing to Banny's team, but we were beating Mix Up. Um, and then for whatever reason, they decided to allow the quick fix, which came out in the middle, like, or toward the end of the season. They just like allowed it in in the season. So like we went in for most of the season having played with the just like Uber and Crits. And then for LAN and like the end of the season, they were just using the quick fix, which gave like people like mix up who caught onto it really quickly, like a more favorable finish than they might've gotten otherwise. Cause I think we actually could have beaten mix up with just Uber and crits, but we were too small brain to, <laughs> to, to win the, the quick fix menace. So that was just like really stupid. So maybe he like deserved <laughs> at least second that year. Uh, but all things considered, like he didn't really play for that long. From a, a skill perspective, I definitely agree that he should be highly ranked, but uh, a little bit weird just based on how long he played. Try has some of the best Rockets. Yeah, I mean, Try has really good like DM in general. Um, Oplad number 46. I expected a higher ranking. I expected like 40th for Oplad or something because Oplad played a, a really fucking... He played like... For a decent amount of time, like four years is a pretty decent amount of time. Nine seasons played, eight playoff appearances, one championship. And he was like around from like the very beginning. Um, so he like was one of, you know, the top scouts in the game from literally like the get go. Like he was, you know, competing with like Reptile and shit, you know. So it's kind of like almost like a little bit like he's one of the only boomers that I'm like surprised is lower because I expect him to be much higher. I, like, I don't... <clears throat> in the grand scheme of things, like, a player like Carnage is, is more... Uh, he's, like, more influential, I guess, than Oplad, but really not that much more decorated and also played for the exact same amount of time. But, like, the differential in ranking is, like, enormous. <clears throat> Marmalou is definitely another one of those players that, like deserves to be ranked really highly but it's like sort of like a skill versus like accomplishments discussion because like marmalou is definitely like probably one of if not the most like skilled soldier players in terms of like dm that i've that i've ever seen like even like people like mike included um but like he you know he just a lot of these players like just haven't like really won at all but they've like made their way into like a pretty into a pretty favorable ranking especially like Kozen who didn't even like play that long um and try so like it's I don't know he played yeah Marble at least played like longer and he's from like a more recent era where like the I don't think Terry like Terry very clearly has like a bias toward like what he considers to be the golden age um but yeah Marmalou definitely incredible player I think in terms of, like, if I made a list to myself in terms of skill, um, he'd be even higher than this. So, Solid Snake, 44. Um, Solid Snake is, like, I almost, like, forgot Solid Snake existed, to be honest. <laughs> because he was, like, such a weird demo. And, like, just just to, like give you like a litmus test or like not that's like the wrong word but like give you an idea of what the game is like the game was like when solid snake was like really good is like toward the end of when solid snake was playing he was running like the charge and targe and they were like still like winning slash like doing very well and he literally didn't have stickies so another one of those players where like when you look at it <laughs> from like a with a more modern scope and you look at the players who played and uh <laughs> and like the the style of of play and how how good the teams were it looks like he's rated way too highly 
um, which I like kind of agree with. Like Solid Snake was never really like an unbelievable, insane demo. Like he was just he like his thing was like he could hit pipes really well. But like he used the fucking charge and charge like half the time. So um I don't know. Like he's won like three championships. A lot of these championships though, like aren't even LAN. Like LAN didn't even start in TF two until a certain season. Like a lot of the early wins that you see from people, like the championships aren't even land championships. Which is like maybe not the biggest deal to some people, but in this list, especially, he talks about how important land is compared to like not land. Um, but Solid Snake was good. 44, maybe a little bit too high. I don't I don't know. His it looks like he's a very decorated player, but I think that is that's just like looking at stats without any context. Uh, Justin, Justin is like, I was talking like last time I did this list and I was like, there's fucking no way that they snub Justin, but at the same time, 43 is like pretty high. <clears throat> I don't know. Justin was a really good player. So again, like from like a skill perspective, I would put him at least here, but from a perspective of like, did he like win <laughs> and shit? Like it's hard to justify because Justin was always just a really, really good sniper, a better scout than he got credit for, for sure. He was like, just, he was a, a good scout player. Like he made good decisions, had good DM. Um, but he was just like so good at sniper that people saw him like as a sniper player mainly. Um, so yeah, I mean, Justin is, is really good. It's hard for me to give like a, whether or not, the ranking is like good enough or not. Um, but sure. Like when, when I contrast Justin to somebody like Oplad, like I'm surprised Justin is ahead of Oplad, I guess is, is the best way to think about it. <clears throat> oh, I'm number 42. Yeah. Good joke. Boomer was a really good player, but I'm so surprised that he's number 42. Um, because that, that's, like, the thing. Like, when I first looked at this list, and I was, like, looking at, like, the 90s and the 80s and the 70s and all this shit, there were, like, so many random people, I felt like, that were there that, like, just didn't have to be there. And that's where, like, a lot of players like Boomer could have just been, and it would have made sense if you, like, stacked the rest of the list just with, like, people who've won and who are, like, really fucking good. Even from this era, like, I don't even, like, I'm not, like, an era snob. Like, I think that, like, a lot of people who played now are, like, really fucking good like lol guy deserves a much better ranking than what he got just from like that one win alone and like boomer is is like only number 42 because like he played for like a decent amount of time and like boomer's like a skilled player like he could like come back and like not be much worse than he was before if he just like practiced and stuff but like he didn't like half of his seasons only half of them are playoff appearances he was like a good player when he went to playoffs and he was like very um like versatile like he, he had played soldier demo scout he was like my scout partner when i played and then he switched to demo for land it's just like a really big like he's definitely like a versatile player but just like this is more of like uh you hear the name boomer and you're like oh he played like back in like 2011 and like 2013 and shit and like that's when everybody was really good and like he was a good player so like he has to be 42 but i feel like I don't know. Like, I feel like that's, like, a really high ranking. Um, and the only reason it makes sense in the context of this list is because, you know, in, in the fucking, like, 80s and 90s, they have, like, a Highlander player <laughs> or whatever, you know? It's like, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I did. Uh, there I am. Corsa. In the community, it's very memed on that course is number 41. A bunch of hashtags, uh, justice for Nick going on on my Steam friends list. Definitely seems um, a little bit too low, but, ag but again, course is like another one of those players that like you look at them and like you know they're really good mechanically, but like... <laughs> 
he doesn't have like he's never won half of his seasons or playoff appearances or slightly more than half um so like if you just look at his stats you would be like oh maybe that does make sense the thing that's different from boomer and corsa though is that corsa was like a really really talented individual player whereas like boomer was good individually but like he wasn't corsa um on like any of the classes he played really so like Corsa's like ability to impact the game on scout makes this ranking seem a little bit um too low because the only time the only time I'd agree with like looking at stats like this or like achievements like this or whatever and being like yeah this is too low is if the player themselves were sort of just like reflective of those stats but that's like not really the case with Corsa he's like way too good to have like stats like this and look at them just without any context so Corsa probably a little bit too low on this list should be like at least in the 30s um at least probably more in like the 20s um but like <laughs> like they give you like this graphic at the end of every single one of them and like look at all these like random people that are on this list that like 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 Mason Bohr, like Hubris, Paladin, like pa literally n nobody would know who Paladin was if he didn't ring for Sickness when Sickness's power went out in like the the EG finals or whatever. Like they were like playing complexity in the finals and like Sickness's like computer bricked or something. And Paladin, like, rank for him. And no one would even know who the fuck Paladin was if it wasn't for that. So it's, like... It just seems, like, really... It seems like they're trying to give, like, everyone from every era, like, they picked out some, like, names that, like, they can, like, from the back of their, their head, and they pulled it out, and they were like, oh, Paladin, but... Like, so... Th Sometimes if you played from, like, 2008 to 2010 and you really didn't do anything spectacular, like it's okay if you're not on the list. You know what I mean? Why is Mumasilla? Because he's absolutely dog shit. Um, but yeah. You would think with like, if it was like well, it more well put together that you would see like people like Boomer like around this area and it would make sense because they wouldn't be surrounded by like hubris. Um, Let's move on. Number 40. We got Steve. We got Steve. We got Dewatna, legendary, legendary Froyo Tech demo man. Um, I said this on the thread, but it's hard for me to imagine 39 players with better careers than Dewatna. Like, he went from being, like, a really unbelievably good demo man carry on, like, R5 and 20B to joining us on Froyo Tech and then just nonstop winning. Um... And those wins were, like, not the easiest wins. We even won, we won I-52, we won I-55. So, like, that's not only three ECA championships that he has, um, but also a SEVO championship, I think, unless he skipped out on the tournament. And then two Insomnia wins. Yeah, I don't, does it not say anything about... Uh, yeah, it doesn't say anything about IFIFA. five. So, like, he won two internationals. Three ECA championships. And, like, a SEVO championship. And then Jaeger is number 39. So, let's... Let's concentrate on how fucking crazy this ranking is. Like, Steve, Dewana definitely deserves at, at least, like, number 29. Like, at least, like, from 30 to 20. 
So it's like fucking crazy that he's like number 40. Um, to be honest. <clears throat> Jaeger. Someone in my chat asks uh, who Jaeger is. Well, first somebody says, I think that was when I stopped watching CompTF2. I just assumed Freya Tech were going to win every season after that. I mean, we pretty much did until Banny cut Ash in the middle of our, our playoff game. But that's neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. Number 39, to answer that Shatter's question of who Jaeger is, Jaeger played um, Soldier in TF2 um, when people could like basically barely rocket jump. Um, he was like the original roaming soldier. So like he found places to hide um, and like shit to do. Like he was like a good player. Like again, like you have to give people like this props back then because they didn't have any like data or like videos or like people to watch and learn from to like do impressive shit. So like they start playing TF2 for like the first time essentially, you know, and they're like, oh my God, like I'm good. And then they just keep like, they just keep dominating people until they quit, right? So it's like, you have to give them props because they didn't like, it's not like we expect people from like 2008 to be like C tapping until like fucking high bombs on mid or something, you know? <clears throat> but um, he was like essentially like the OG roaming soldier. Like he, he was like the first like, oh, I'll like hide and then pick the medic, you know? And like, I'll just go for like, medic pick plays and like weird like roaming soldier plays um so like he, he sort of like the birth of that um but again he played for two years in 2008 played four seasons three three championships again not all land Definitely does not deserve a higher ranking than Dewana. Um, I would definitely have him on the top 100 list. Dave got snubbed. Um, I definitely have him on the list, but I would not um, have him this high, especially not if Dewan is number 40. That's crazy. That's some crazy shit. Tyrone! <laughs> Tyrone So Tyrone has been out of the gaming life for I mean he's associated with with gaming but he's been out of like the playing life for quite a long time He's more of like the entrepreneurial type which extended into his gameplay because he was the greatest TF2 entrepreneur of all time. He would just get some of the best players to play with him because he was like a good leader. And then those players would like pop the fuck off and carry him to a victory. Um, so he did a first where like he, he had Banny on his team for a long time. Banny was like an incredible player. And then season six, he had YC50, who was like a breakout star. Um, and they didn't win season six, but they won the next season, um, season seven, against like all these like teams with like the beloved boomers that everybody loves, like the Carnage Relics, the Enigmas, like uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, like they won that season, season seven. Then they lost the next season. Um, the team shuffled. I joined their team in season nine. We won again um, against, again, like all these like teams with like these like incredible players. Uh, we won season nine, lost season 10, won season 11. So all of his championships are LAN. Um, he did go to I-46, gets second. <clears throat> but Tyrone did only play for two years and Truth be told, truth be told, one of the most, one of the most carried players in all of TF2 history ever is Tyrone. 
Okay, I would argue even more so than Mackie. Because Mackie had like this weird X factor to him where Mackie like could go fucking like spy or like sniper and like always get an unbelievable like pick on like the medic or like make like a game changing game saving play. And so Mackie was, I think like better than people give him credit for because like people just like think of him as like rocket jump script and like, like bad DM or whatever. And like, he didn't have like his soldier DM was, was not good, but he had like this weird uncanny ability to be like good, like randomly, like really good exactly when you needed it. Um, so like having Tyrone, what what's Matt? I'm not going to scroll past all these things, but I think Mackie's like something like 60 something or 50 something or some shit like that. Crazy. Cause the only thing Tyrone has over Mackie is that he was like the team leader and he did have like a calming demeanor and he was like pretty good at like just kind of macroing the team and like just communicating and stuff. But he got mega carried like ultra mega fucking hard carried pretty much the entire time. And it only got worse as time went on. Cause like in season six, seven or whatever, like Tyrone was like, Eh, eh. But then, like, by the time we got to, like, season 11 and, like, fucking I-46 and shit, like, it was, like, the the soldier diff that was going on between Mixup and our team was, like, tremendous. So, Tyrone, great entrepreneur. Uh, high five. Good old Kyle. No, we spoiled it. Kyle. Uh, honestly, most of Kyle's career is like right after I quit. Um, fun trivia. There has never been a combat class player to lead ESCA invite and assist except for high five. That's some, some teammate diff. But as you can see, I mean, he has pretty good, like, uh, accomplishments. Seasons played, 12. Playoff appearances, 9. Um, a lot of versatility in his ability to play different classes. Um, like, I've played a lot with High Five recently, just, like, pugs and shit. And, like, his demo is also pretty good. Um, even though he's known for being, like, a scout or, like, started his career as a scout. He has luscious brown or blonde cur curls. That is true. I played him in uh, Melee one time at LAN. Uh, like a long ass time ago. I knew who High Five was like before I quit or whatever. But like when I quit is when he started really like popping off um, in Invite. But yeah, I mean, High Five is definitely a much better player than Tyrone. And Jaeger. Shrugger. Shrugger, number 36. So this is one of like the more confusing rankings that I've ever seen uh, on this list. Because Shrugger like play, played for a really long time, played like during uh, like his coveted um, golden era of TF2. Was, like, known for, like, even when he played, for, like, being one of the best scouts in the game. And, like, movement-wise, maybe the best. Um, so, like, even just, like, stats aside and accomplishments and achievements aside. Just from, like, the... Just from the... Talk about him and, like, the knowledge that people who played against him and contemporaries had was that he had, like, really, like, both good DM and movement and maybe the best movement. So, like, to have him at, like, number 36, even from that perspective, is strange. But then you look at, like, his achievements, and you look at what he, he did throughout his career, and, like, he's won three times. I mean, I, I don't remember who number 35 is, but I'm going to guess they didn't win three, five, or three times. I'm going to guess number 35 doesn't have three championships, nine playoff appearances, and 11 seasons played. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm just going to get owned by this list, but I just don't buy it. Um, 
he started like on like Mihai's flow as well. Like he had a disappointing land on Mihai's flow. Um, but that was like one of the best regular season teams that like existed. Um, in the game at the time, and we fucking owned them at LAN. Oh my god, what a comeback for number four seed at season eleven LAN. But, um. He, like, went from being on flow to just, to, like, joining Banny's team, winning multiple ECA seasons, um, winning, or getting, what did they get, third at I-Series? Um, and then being, after his, his Banny tenure, being, like, the second place slash third place team um, on, like, Ascent and, like, Ronin and, like, that you know, sponsor group or whatever that kept, uh, like, the same players on it the whole time. And then he eventually won um, that season I quit. So quite a lot of accomplishments for Shrugger. Um, very strange. He's got some crazy FPH that postseason. I mean, you know we love FPH. Um top four in FPH up here. But, like, I'm going to guess that, like, the rest of this ranking is not is not going to be... Uh... So, Yite, number 35. Actually, I, didn't think, I thought Yite was a little bit lower than this. Or higher, I guess. Weird. Like, Yite has one championship against Banny. Just like technically Shrugger has, because they knocked us into the lower bracket and then we lost. And that's it. Compared to like Shrugger. So like if I were to put if I were to like I would definitely have Yite. I'd have both of these players much higher than they are, but I would have Shrugger ahead of Yite, probably. Why is Squid number sixty? But Yite thirty five. I don't know. Squid got super snubbed as well and like a good ranking like squid number 60 is like crazy like think about the fact like boomer what was boomer again like 45 or something and squid was 60 that's crazy but yite um super talented player beat banny last season has been like a playoff appearing player for 10 of his last 12 seasons um, really good DM, really good mechanics, um, but probably also in the same boat as Shrugger, just way too low on this list. Um, once, once you're, once you're straddling Tyrone here, <laughs> you're probably a little too low on the list. Uh, moving on, Mela. <clears throat> Let's knock it out. Actually, both of them. And one, Mela and Rando, 34 and 35, because they're both soldiers for the same team. This is where, like, the list kind of breaks down to me. Because, like, this just seems, I mean, like, it's super hard to make a list like this. But specifically, this, like, group, like, this installment of 10 just seems super, like, lazy. Like, there is no universe where Mela and Rando are both next to each other who are also right next to Shrugger, who are also ahead of Shrugger. Like, there's no universe where that is the reality of the situation. Like, Shrugger was the carry on that team. And he's both outranked by Mela and Rando, who played on the same team as him, who were not as good as Shrugger. Um... And are just like, there's like, like just no, like, there's just no way that these people like are right next to each other. I don't know. Anyway, Mela, um, a really good roamer for his time or soldier in general, I guess. I, I think he played pocket as well for like a, little, a small amount of time. Um, but I knew Mela mostly for like his roamer gameplay, which he did a lot of things that like soldiers kind of do now by default. Like Mela on Metalworks, I remember, would, would just do like the super high bomb off the roof every single mid like literally every single mid on, on metalworks he would just do the high bomb off the roof 
or off the side. Um, <clears throat> it was like really good um, DM wise. Um, was just like a really good player. But from my perspective, like Mela and Rando, and I guess we'll have Rando as well. Rando, I mean, Rando was also really good DM wise, but like the problem with Rando's teams is that he took like 30% heals as like the soldier. So like think about, okay, think about like how good Shrugger was when he played back then, right? Or whatever, like when he was on that team. And then think about the fact that like that team played with 30% heals on their pocket soldier. And like he still played as well as he did. So like Rando's like biggest problem was he was just a heal hog. Super big heal hog. But he was like really good DM wise. Um, Rando is like... Yeah, I don't know. Rando's a really good player. Like was sort of like the leader of the team and like the captain of the team. Probably deserves a better ranking than, than Mela, but both of them, both of them probably deserve this specific ranking, like around this area, like around 30, but not higher than Yite and Shrugger, I think. Um, yeah. Because Shrugger also, like, Shrugger also won with, like, Banny or whatever, so he has, like, more championships as well. Um, so... I don't know. There's no conceivable way that you look at like these careers and these career numbers and stuff. And then you say like, yeah, it makes sense. Mela and Rando um, should be higher than Shrugger. It's just crazy. Um, but anyway, Psy guy number 32. This is another situation where I feel like putting Psy guy like ahead of like Shrugger is just like so weird to me. I don't really have like a specific, I, I don't really know much about Psy guy. Like he like, again, like played like, or like was, a good invite player like after I had quit. Um <clears throat> but uh yeah I don't know like with Psy Guy he won one championship with Banny. So like every Banny championship is like for some people like a, a Mickey Mouse type ring or whatever. Um but Psy Guy Psyga is another one of those people that I would maybe have like in this general area, but not ahead of these people. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know enough about Psyga to like have like a, an insightful idea. Patty um, definitely seems too low to me. What year did I quit? Like 20, technically like 2016, I guess. That's only because I came back for a season. So, like, Overwatch came out 2015, like, late 2015, closed beta. Then it went down, like, around, like, New Year's time to be, like, worked on for a full release. So, like, within that, like, three-month span of time or some ridiculous amount of time that they didn't, um, that, like, Overwatch, like, wasn't available to be played, um, I played, like, one final season of TF2 which was technically in 2016, but I like kind of stopped playing for real in like 2015. Um, Patty definitely deserves a better ranking than 31, like kind of crazy accomplishments to be number 31, 15 seasons played, 12 playoff appearances, five championships, including, um, Rewind 2, which is, like, what? Technically, like, a like an international, right? Um, but, like, Patty's always been, like, known as being, like, a very, like, mechanically skilled player, as well as being, like, an intelligent player, like, within the game. So, just kind of weird to me. Uh, she definitely, definitely deserves a better ranking than 31. Um... Because he not only has experience like in the golden era, but then like of an extremely successful uh, career afterwards. Moving on, number 30. 
so J, number 30. This is always where it gets hard for me because I think J from like a, like a talent perspective, from like a skill perspective is like easily like a top 15 player all time. Um, but hasn't played that long. So you can like justify that he is like not that high. So <laughs> I like how he goes into the market gardener and stuff. But yeah, um, probably deserves a better ranking, but you can't put him at like the ranking that you want to put him at because he just simply hasn't played that long. But like even just looking at the, like the current achievements that he has, like they're pretty good. Like it's funny that like you look at like a boomer that like you literally subtract 10 from the years from both years here. And like some boomer like Jaeger has like a really good ranking. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think he probably deserves a better ranking. There's probably people you can like find to put ahead of him or put behind him, like the fragile probably. Um, but he is, yeah, I don't know. Talent wise, definitely like easily like a, like a top, top 10 probably player that I've played against just off the top of my head. In NA, at least. Uh, the Fragile, number 29. So Fragile is like one of those medics that played for fucking ever. Um, yeah, the, the year's active refers only to it, same, but... Um, 29, Fragile. Like, Fragile was active in, in Invite from 2008 to 2015. <laughs> Um, so, like, a really fucking long time. Like, crazy amounts of longevity. Is the Fragile the only zero championship player at this point? Yeah, I think so. He, I think he's the last one um, in this group of people. <clears throat> so, Fragile. I don't, like, necessarily disagree with, like, this ranking. Um... I just possibly disagree with like who might be behind him. Like Fragile played a really fucking long time and he was like one of the best medics in the game like from literally 2008 to 2015. Uh, which is like pretty hard to do and pretty crazy. And he's also like a really cool guy. So that's like easily like plus 10 on the rankings. Um, but I don't, yeah, I don't necessarily disagree with it. I mean, like, people like him need to have, like, they need to have, need to get props for what they did in the game for as long as they did it. And, yeah, he played for, for 10 seasons, nine playoff appearances, was a really good medic the whole time. So, um, definitely agree with him, like, in his placement compared to other medics, for sure, that are on this list. Sizer, number 28. Sizer is so much... His ranking is so much worse than it should be. I hate, like, saying higher and lower. Because lower implies, like, lower on, like, the number line. <laughs> or whatever. Going in reverse. But, like, every time I say lower, I mean, like, he should have a lower number. Um... But he, he has, like, such a, a bad ranking here. Like, look at how fucking long Sizer played for. Look at how fucking long he played. 2008 to 2016, 19 seasons played, 16 playoff appearances, 4 championships. So, like, he was a really good player in Evil Geniuses back when the game had sponsors. Sort of sponsors. They didn't actually, like, play themselves or anything, but... Evil Geniuses, like... With reptile sickness, like, a long-ass fucking time ago. So he was, like, scouting against, like, people like Carnage. And then, like, he 
kept playing and was like a top invite player when like other players that played from his era just kind of either quit or fell off. He like kind of maintained a level of consistency, which is like a testament to his like ability to adapt, I think. Like I never thought Sizer was like an incredibly good player, like from a talent perspective. Um Charisbra, thanks for the tier one sub. Um but yeah, I mean, from like an individual standpoint, Sizer was never insane, and I never thought he was like an insane player. But he was always like a relevant scout for as long as he played. Um, and that starts in, in the year 2008, which is fucking crazy. But he was, even like to, to 2016, when he was like finally like kind of getting out of the game like he was still like a relevant and good scout just because he could he understood how to play the game and he understood how to adapt um so yeah i don't know i think size deserves a much better ranking than this um i mean we won together two times we got second at i-46 we went did we went together no and then he played on on banny's team with shrugger and then they won two more times um but yeah he I know he's won a lot. I have like personal experience with him playing alongside him, and I think he should be ranked much better. Um, Sizer streams. Yeah, I think he deserves much better. And then he got Alpha. Alpha is like another one of those like difficult rankings because he played for so long, but he never won. So like. As long as Alpha played and like his ability to like play a bunch of different classes at like a high level is valuable. But I just can't justify putting him ahead of like Pfizer or even like Shrugger. Because he very much is like the Swiss Army knife of TF2, but I don't really think that that should be like better than like people who have had like truly like illustrious careers um like winning and shit all the time in the game so just it's sort of like a weird ranking because like alpha is like obviously a very talented player and like played for so long and was like good when it was the golden age and is good like again now um but like, it just it just doesn't feel right to like put him like ahead of people who have literally won like five times. I mean, like maybe you could argue that if he was on Freya Tech, he would have won five times. But that's like really hard to like. I don't know. That's not. A you have that's like just a hypothetical. You have no idea if that's true. But also like, he would have been on Freya Tech if he was like better than Dewatna at the time at demo. Or he was like better than like I don't know some soldier player we were picking up. But, like, he wasn't, you know? So it's, like, I don't know. To have him, like, number 27 and Steve 40 is kind of crazy. Relic number 26. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess Relic was like never to me like a standout soldier. Like he wasn't bad, but like when he played with like Platt and shit on like Mix Up, um, like in that team with like Enigma, he was sort of just like solid. So this is where, like, sort of, like, the, the championships and the playoff appearances and stuff, like, are weighted more than what I think of, um, aren't there a lot more players in competitive team now, so wouldn't the Golden Age be now? I don't really know about, like, the player count and stuff, because that's, like, sort of just... Like, I think if you use, like, RGL as, like, a baseline, that's, like, kind of hard <clears throat> to argue because, like, ESCA was definitely more prestigious, but, like, 
cost money like a lot of money to actually play because you had to like subscribe to the fucking thing and like to play like open even you had to like you know pay a certain amount of money um but i'm only using golden age to refer to like what the author refers to as golden age i don't really have any like specific opinions about it um But yeah, I don't know. Relic is like one of those players where like talent wise, like individually, like my perception of how good he was is probably ranked lower or like not as good as what his accomplishments give him. But I wouldn't really disagree with his ranking. 26 like seems okay to me, I guess. Although, I mean, not really, because again, like there are players that are way better than him that are ranked much worse. But I think if I were just to envision a list in my head that he would like be somewhere around 30. So maybe he's like a little bit inflated, but. You dead ass let ESEA farm Bitcoin for another year after TF2 is done. God damn it, Habib. God damn it, number five. He was also not the greatest equalizer abuser. He just had one clip of him swinging an equalizer on point and killing a bunch of clueless players that couldn't just like shoot a soldier one time and kill them. So for that, he gets like the, like that is such a meme clip. I don't know. I know people like really like that clip, but it's so fucking stupid. He's literally spinning around, swinging his equalizer on the point, killing people. Not a single player could touch him. Like, does that mean I deserve number one for being the best sword player in fucking TF2? Come on. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Relic has a lot of championships won. Shouldn't be better than, than like Steve or, or Shrugger though. Laz, 25. Laz is another one of like those Marmalue type situations where Laz has like incredible like mechanics on Soldier. Um, and he beat Manny last season, which is really big. So for me, having him like around here, like around number 20 is probably where I would put Laz. So I don't really necessarily disagree with the ranking. He also has Pikachu as his Pokedex number, which is, like, fucking huge. But, yeah, I would have him probably more in the teens or near, like, near, like, number 20. Um, but, I, I mean, I, I don't really have, like, the personal, like, other than, like, playing against him in pugs and stuff, I don't have, like, that personal experience against him that makes me think that he's, like, way better or worse than he is or whatever. Um, because he played after I quit. Firmly after I quit. So last J Laz and J have set the standard for modern day soldier. Yeah, that's, I mean that's definitely true. <sighs> Reptile. Number twenty four. My boy. So Adam was really fucking good actually. Um he's like one of the few boomers that like was actually really good um was like the best soldier in the game was also really good at demo he has like that like notorious clip of him on like gravel pit where he like air shots like three people trying to defend c or whatever and like barely misses the last pipe that he would have hit if he had the iron bomber that is used today so if you just substitute the iron bomber for all those pipes that reptile shot in that video he wins by the way he wins that but number 24, Reptile was like even good. So this was Reptile's career, right? He played Soldier for a while, blah, 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 blah. I think he like took a little bit of a break. And then like he was on Experiment for season nine with like Dummy, uh, Justin White. Where's their Soldier? Wonderwall? He was like on that team for season nine. And he was playing Scout. 
And he Scout was definitely a class that he was not good at. Um, and he eventually got cut for Carnage. Um, and that was around the time that we learned that CB was getting married um, and couldn't make LAN, which is, like, ridiculous, because, like, why would you not just put up your wedding for UCLA? But we needed to, like, either put Mackie on Medic or Reptile on Medic um, to go to LAN. And Reptile was actually really good at Soldier. Like, we had him at first, like, just kind of playing Soldier because, like, it made more sense in our brain to put, like, Reptile, like, one of the greatest soldiers of all time on Soldier and then put, like, Mackie, who, like, was, like, known for his ability to, like, off-class and stuff, just, like, on Medic and fill, out, fill on Medic. And when Reptile played, he was actually really good at Soldier. Like, DM-wise, like, he was really good. Um, he just was also better than Mackie at Medic, so we put Reptile on Medic to just sort of fill and, like, keep our combat classes, like, the same consistency that we've always had them at um, with, like, Mackie and his off-classing and all that shit. Um, and Reptile was really good at Medic, and we won that LAN with Reptile on Medic. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Reptile was like a really, really good player. And like, I think he should be, if we're, if we're going to like glorify like boomers for being like trailblazers in their own right, Reptile was very much a trailblazer for soldier and he should be ranked higher. Um, because you'll see in a few rankings why he should be ranked higher. Pure number 23. I don't necessarily disagree with this. I think maybe Pure could have like squeezed his way in as like a top 20 player. Um, but 23 isn't like too egregious or anything. Pure was like always like one of the best medics in the game and like was known for having like a mind for the game won three times. Beat me at I-46 because his team was significantly better than mine. And um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much that. He was also pretty decent at like demo and like combat classes um, that other medics didn't really have the versatility to play. Um, he did kill my team in season 15. Um, but if that didn't happen, maybe Freya Tech never would have happened, so... Um, yeah, he was, he was really good. I don't disagree with this, this ranking at all. Um, I think he's definitely like the best of the medics who have been listed already in terms of like legacy. Uh, Carter, number 22. So I feel like in Ash's case, he's easily also somebody who could have been from 10 to 20. In the thread I mentioned after season 15, Froyo made changes. Yeah, they lost a mix up in season 15. So season 15, I was on watch this before the season started, which was a team with me, Pure, Dummy Blaze, Justin, and Milo. And we were, like, really good. And then, like, just some drama shit happened and we our team died before the season started. But then I played in main. I didn't play, like, invite that season. And, like, mix-up wound up beating Danny's team in the finals. So then we, next season, like, remade or made Freyo Tech, but swapped around the, the pieces. We took, like, Banny and Shade from, uh, from that team and then combined it with uh, myself, dummy, please. Um, but Ash, I feel like, is somebody who could be easily from, like, 10 to 20. He played with us on Freyo Tech, um, won a championship there, would have probably won another one if, like, that drama didn't happen during that playoff match. 
um, but also won um, I-55 with us. So, and then he came back and then beat Banny again last season. So he has, he has not only a non-Banny championship, but also a Banny championship. And has always been like a pretty solid player. So I think there is definitely a world where he could have been a little bit higher, but I guess we'll see who is ahead of him make that decision. Yeah, see, like, I, I think Ash definitely deserves a better ranking than bot mood. Um, so. I don't know, maybe he gets, like, more for, like, having... Demo man there? I, I don't I don't really know. Cause again, like Ash is both Ash won um on Scout for us on Froyo Tech for that ESA season and for um I fifty five. So and then he went on to beat Banny on Soldier later. But uh <clears throat> yeah, I mean bot mode like seems to be really highly ranked here based on who he is ahead of. But definitely deserves to be like on this side of the top 100. I probably wouldn't have him above Ash or like Laz or Sizer. Um, but yeah, definitely deserves to be like in this in this area of the list. You wanted to have them in the top 20, huh? Sure. All right, before we get into this next installment of the list, let's just, um, we'll swap real quick to just my face. Number 20, we have a redacted name that I feel like, if I were being honest here, probably shouldn't be on the list and could have just been replaced by Dave AC. So let's just get that out of the way. And now we're on number 19. Here we are on number 19. We got Dummy! Who just found his way to number 19 on this list. Let's fucking go, Tim. <laughs> fucking yeehaw. <clears throat> okay. Number 19. Somehow Dummy has made his way onto number 19 on the list here. Um... Surprising that he's ahead of Dave AC at number 20, but, um, or Moose at number 20. Uh, but Tim is another one of those people who played like fucking forever. Um, he's a lot like Sizer in that regard, but like took multiple breaks in the middle of, of like his career or whatever. Um, was always like a talented player and could play. The thing about Tim is he literally never played the game. Like, he will admit that he never played the game. Like, he literally, like, he never pugged. He would, like, get on for, like, a scrim play and then not play and, like, play a match and then not play um, until the next scrim or match. So, like, for the amount of time he spent on the game, he was... Good. I mean, he was always like a top three demo, I would say, in Invite. Um, all the way back when he played it, like, with Reptile and shit. Because um, that's how long he's played the game. Um, but, I mean, he came in on Freyo Tech. We had him on Demo at first, and then we moved him over to Scout because, like, I don't know. Banny has a very particular way of, of his teams running and like the classes just weren't working. So we had like dummy on scout for like a brief amount of time with like me on scout and Banny on demo. And then by the end, 
um, at LAN, we put Dummy back on demo. Uh, and Tim kind of owned, actually, at demo, GBH, uh, at that LAN. He, like, kind of shit on them. Um, but yeah, no, he's definitely higher ranked than he should be. Like, there's no way that, like, Dummy should be higher ranked than Dewatna. If we're, even if we're just looking at it in, like, this, from the scope of, like, demo players. Like, there's no way Dummy is, like, a better demo, even legacy-wise, uh, than Dewatna. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. Dummy is um, definitely too high on this list, but... <laughs> They fucked up by putting by putting dummy on number at number nineteen. He's gonna make fun of every single TF two player until another list is made that has more traction than this list. So <clears throat> let's fucking go, Tim. Number eighteen, Carnage. This is like a weird thing for me because Carnage. Dude, there's so many meat shots. Wait, wait. Actually, no. I was gonna I was gonna play like Infinity or some shit, but let's let's keep it professional, okay? Carnage is like one of those players where I feel like relax. Everyone thinks or I think that everybody thinks that like players like myself or whatever came into the scene basing our game style off of Carnage or like really like um, just like wanting to be like idolizing Carnage and like stealing his gameplay. But that, at least for me, I mean, maybe this is the, like different for other people, but like the scout that got me into playing scout was like Walters. And if I was to put an NA player there, it'd be like Enigma or Moose because Moose was like an ammo mod lord back then before I started playing competitively or like on the brink of when I started playing competitively. And Moose was really good at scout who also, by the way, got snubbed. So Moose was really like Moose and Enigma Walters were really more of like my, my like early um, influences for scout. Um, so this is all this is also one of those things where like you look at his championships and like I think he only won one LAN event. Which isn't like awful. I mean he has you know two online championships and uh, an online championship um pretty much perpetual playoff appearancer. But like I don't really rate Carnage that much higher than like Reptile or like honestly even like even like Relic because Carnage like popped off on Scout early on so everybody has this like really like high um, they like rate him really highly because they watched like Meat Shot Volume 1, 2, and 3 where he was like literally in the first Meat Shot he didn't double jump once but that's beside the point. Relic also lasted way longer than Carnage and one after Carnage and one more lands than Carnage. Um, but he's definitely like, he definitely deserves a really high ranking on this list, but I wouldn't like, I wouldn't put Carnage above Sizer, for example. Like Sizer literally played over double the seasons that Carnage played. And won more than Carnage played at LAN. All LAN wins. And simply because of like Carnage's like ability in like 2009 and, and early 10, I guess. Um, or in 8, but 2008 is like a meme year. He gets like a really, really high ranking, I think. Um, 
but yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't put Carnage like above like Ash or or uh Shrugger, Sizer. A uh, hell of a lot of people that came before him. Um Yeah. Definitely deserves to be on the list. Like, was an influential player in his own right that he, like, kind of came in and, like, was the first scout that was, like, talented enough to, like, play scout in, like, that way. But, like, even even toward, like, even, like, toward, like, Season 9, when I won Season 9, like, he was not, like, Carnage was not, like, a top performing scout. So... Um, yeah, I don't know. Probably rated too highly, um, just sort of based off of like meat shot and like his meat shot volumes and stuff. My fucking boy. So at first I was worried that like YZ was going to be like rated worse than Carnage. Because to me, YZ50 was really more like the carnage of when I played. Um, where, like, I started, like, Walters and, like, even earlier than that, like, Enigma and, like, Moose uh, were, like, really big inspirations for me to play Scout. But, like, when YZ was popping off, like, he was the person I looked at as, like, carnage. He's, like, in terms of, like, talent in the game of, like, people I played against, he's, like, up there with, like, Jay. You know, like his just like his talent level was so high um, in in TF2 that it's a testament to how high he was or high, how high he is on this list for how little he played and how little he actually achieved in the game from like a championship perspective. So he played for three years, six seasons played, playoffs every season, came out with like a huge win season seven where like people didn't expect it um, with like the Tyrone squad. And, like, ever since then was, like, you know, just, it was, like, what, like, me and him and, like, Ruin, I guess, for, like, the best, like, scout players, like, aim mechanics players in, in TF2. Um, and pretty much, like, was that good uh, until the day that he just quit. And he also had, like, a little... Uh, affair with Quake in like the middle of his TF2 career and he just shit on people in Quake um, so Ben YZ50 is one of like the best stats mechanics players ever um, and yeah I don't know he is definitely properly rated I would put him even higher if I were just to rank like my own personal bias, like how good were they uh, list, but uh, I'm definitely super glad that he made it this high on the list, especially like above, um, like I would, I would have him above like Sizer just for like mechanical ability alone. But number 16, Ruin. Ruin was like a weird case um, where he played for a really long time, took a long break, and then played again. And he was really good at scout. Um, but sort of like fell off very quickly in a weird way. Uh, when I played against him when he was on like Mihai's flow or whatever... He was, like, insanely fucking good. Insanely good. That was, like, what, season 9 or 11? Season 11? He was insanely good on that, on that team. That LAN. Then I feel like every other LAN, like, every other time I played against him, he, he wasn't as good as he was on that. Like, for example, when I went to I-46... I feel like I was far and away the best scout of that land. 
And like, especially when I think of like back to when I was like playing against Ruin, like I feel like I was just owning. Where when I played against him on Mihai's Flow, like he just like, I thought he was just like the best. Um, so I, I think he like kind of fell off very quickly. And that was even evident when we played, we had him on Froyo Tech for the first like month or something of Froyo Tech's existence. And he was like, I don't know, like really like not as good as he was like the seasons before. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was weird, but he was really, really, really fucking good when he was like in his prime. So definitely like deserve for him to be like number 16. Um, and he also like has like super old school experience too, where like he won with like 20 ID or whatever, uh, with Siegel. So do I read chat? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm also reading the list. Am I talking to you? What is this weird, like bravado thing that you're doing? Go take a shower. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. His, his career was weird because he was so good and I thought that like Ruin was going to be just like the best scout in the game like by far until like the day he quit which like wasn't really the case. Where Servo? Snubbed. Enigma number 15. I feel like Enigma to me is like a top 10 player. And maybe that's like a weird maybe that's weird but for me I think Enigma is like at least number 10 because enigma played for such a long time was like always consistently one of the best scouts in the game from like every perspective that you can like look at scout like mechanically like uh mentally like he was just a really good player um And he was as much of like a part in mix-up success as like somebody like Platt was. So it's like, he also like succeeded before Platt did. Like he was on like that team with Carnage before Platt was even on the team. And then they made mix-up and then he just, everything like that Platt, you know, achieved, Enigma achieved. So, like, Enigma was always, like, a really, really good player. And, yes, also true. He was also impressively good for how little he played. Enigma was also one of those people, like, he didn't pug and shit. He just, like, played scrims and matches. And he was, it, like, really fucking good. And then I played, like, Overwatch with him, and he was really good at Overwatch, too. Like, Enigma's just, like, a really good gamer. And, obviously, you can't, like, take Overwatch into account when you, like, do this ranking or whatever. But, like, I personally know how, like, smart and good of a player he is just like in any game he plays. So I don't know. To me, I think that's a top 10 player. Um, around since the beginning. Hella championships. Crazy, crazy amounts of skill. Probably to me a top, a top 10 player. Eric is maybe the weirdest ranking in this list because I don't necessarily like agree or disagree. But it is so hard to see somebody who won 13 championships and made playoffs essentially every single season he played at number 14. I mean, like, I know he dominated really, like, I do really see that era of TF2 being, like, a little bit, like, the author of this list refers to that as like the dark ages of TF2, which like I kind of agree with. I mean, like it's hard for me, like it sounds like salty for me to like quit and then like see a bunch of people who are like, you know, achieving shit like without me and being like, everybody sucks now. But I think there was like a, a, a real, like a, a real decline in the game um, during that, during that time. Um, but 
Dude, 13 championships is fucking crazy, man. Like, that's insane. I feel like you take one of the people in the top 10 out of the top 10 for Eric based on 13 championships alone. <laughs> that's fuck. I mean, like, yeah, they're Banny championships, but that's fucking crazy. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm talking to somebody. Um, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Let's talk to somebody. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like you take somebody out of the top 10 to put Eric in there because that's fucking crazy, man. Like, 13 fucking wins. They're all Banny wins, but 13 is, is crazy. And he, like, dominated, like, that entire era of TF2 to the moment that he quit, right? He didn't quit on a, on a loss or anything. He just quit. So, I don't know. That's crazy. TLR number 13. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean... Oh, he quit on a cup loss. Um, yeah, no, TLR definitely deserves to be in, in this like area because he was another one of those players that kind of like redefined soldier at the time. TLR and I have like a really long history because we played together, um, like out of like a, a community pub. Um, and like you can see like me in like the kill feed and shit, like in his like first like frag video or whatever like he like just jump started out of that like community like right onto pandemic or whatever um so tlr and i have like quite a long history together like i've known him since i was like 16 years old or some shit um but tyler was another one of those people that like just redefined soldier for what for what it was because he was so good mechanically that um, he like really brought the air shot into like the mainstream you know what I mean like people air shot people before that but Tyler always had like the craziest air shots um, that might not even be something that people do anymore because like it's kind of inefficient to go for air shots while it's on a soldier you might as well just jump again um, or spoon them but uh yeah I don't I don't necessarily disagree with this I, I wouldn't put TLR as like a top 10 player um, because there are just so many players in the top 10 that like deserve it uh, so yeah I mean I'd have him somewhere here if I were to like just make a list in my, in my head and just throw him at like a random number it would be like close to the top 10 but like not in the top 10 probably um, he, he also had like a, a really like a falling off era like, especially when he came back on Banny's team for that one time in 2016. And they got smacked around at a I, whatever, 60, whatever. Or 58, or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would say that's a, that's a fair ranking. Slumnish is another one of these people who... Um, like has his ranking more based on his like mechanical ability um than like more so than his his wins and his championships um cuz you know he's only won once but like was always a top like performing uh scout and i i mean i even i know slumnish like slumnish played like when i was like sort of like making my way out of the scene and he was always like sort of like a pug star scout um but yeah, in terms of like his actual achievements, like it's lacking compared to like some of these other people who have won like 13 times. Um, but I would definitely have him in this area. Slumnish is like the like YZ50 to me um, in his uh, 
when you compare his skill to his his achievements so in, in my head i would have them like very close to each other because they, they both fulfill like the same idea where they're just really really talented uh mechanical players who like won once you know um but yeah like stats wise he's always like you know number two in fph Lansky. Lansky number 11. I think this is actually fair. I don't know. This is where like, if you have like a real top 10, you have to like, I guess I can like try to make my own top 10 after this list is done, but it's like so hard to like see, to like take somebody else out of the top 10 if I'm already taking Eric or putting Eric in the top 10. Um, Lansky was another one of those. He's like almost TLR-esque where Lansky's like mechanics on Soldier were kind of just like super different um, to, to other Soldiers at the time. And when I played with Lansky, he was also a really good leader. Like he could macro really well, like the whole state of the game and shit. So I don't know. Lansky's, um, I would say this is like the fairest placement that I, I could give him. It would either be like from here, like number 11, or somewhere in the top 10. Um, but yeah, all right. This is where uh, he broke the top 10 into two different installments. So let's go from number 10 to number 6. Yeah, Lansky was in my chat, actually, a couple weeks ago. I think during the last time I did this. Harblue number 10. So Harb definitely I see as a top 10 player. Um, Harb was, like, one of the more... He was, like, Mackie if Mackie had, like, put time into the game and had, like, the same level of talent. Because Harblue could do like really weird things like Mackie could do like just sort of like an X factor in games that would like get really key picks or like make like something out of nothing. Um, and was also a really good medic, but he has like achievements like dating back to, yeah, like season six and then like more, you know, uh, golden age era wins. Like when he beat Banny's team season 15, that like brought Freyo tech like into, um, fruition so hard blue is like definitely a top 10 player i'll have to see who the rest are to really adequately rank see like bedonsky number nine like bedonsky was a crazy good player but i think putting him so much higher than someone like dewana is just disingenuous because bedonsky was really good but I would put him maybe slightly ahead of, of Duwana. I would obviously move Duwana way higher up the list. Like, he wouldn't be number 40. But in my vision, Badonsky and, and Duwana would be a lot closer to each other. Um, Badonsky was always, like, really good. He actually pissed me the fuck off when I played against him because I was, like, playing against, like, double donk bullshit, and it raged the fuck out of me. Um, but if you look at his achievements, like he did only win once. Yes. It's all, it's about like, you know, it's against Banny and shit. So it's hard to win when you're playing against Banny. Um, but it just still seems a little bit out of place to have Bedonsky at number nine. Like, would people really disagree if you swap Bedonsky and Eric? Like, I feel like that's. makes more sense to me. Because um, I remember looking at this list like when it came out and seeing Bedonsky at number 9 was like really surprising to me because I 100% expected him to be around top 10 but like actually breaking into the top 10 was surprising to me. Um, it's always where the list gets like confusing because you have to make hypothetical arguments, you know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, but if Benonsky was on Fairy Tech, he would have won a thousand more times, which I agree with, but that's just not the reality. <laughs> so, 
you know like i don't know it, it's hard to make that argument because that just didn't happen and like there's no way to be sure that that would happen it probably would like logically speaking it would but like you can't just like create a hypothetical and be like oh well if he was on you know freyo he would have 14 championships just like eric like i mean that's that's like way more subjective than like whatever the list is using to rank people so it's like tough you know i agree that like losing against banny counts way less than losing in general but i wouldn't say that like losing you know 10 championships or whatever to banny like wins out over winning 13 championships with Benny. Like, I don't know. He also like sort of won against Benny. I know before I said technically they won against us, but they sent us to the lower bracket and then Ash got cut in the middle of our game and then we lost the showstopper. So we didn't, he didn't actually win a grand finals again. Like the same thing happened last season 21. Yeah. When I quit the last season I played before I fully quit for Overwatch, they did the same thing. They dropped us into the lower bracket and then we came back in the grand finals and beat them twice. What is the sort of win? Because if you're going to use winning against Banny as context to being really important, you have to make sure you actually win against Banny in the Grand Finals. What do you mean? That's like a huge difference. Like that's an enormous difference. Like if you're going to use winning against Banny as like the litmus test for every single one of your, your rankings, then like actually being the one to knock Banny out of the tournament is way more important than like being the first win against somebody in the playoffs. Why, though, if you beat him in playoffs, it doesn't... Of course it counts, but it doesn't count, like, as much as, like, if, like, literally... You, I could use the same hypothetical argument to be like, okay, well, we could have come back if Ash didn't get cut, and then we could have won that last season. So it's like, I don't know. He was, like, definitely, like, a top... He's absolutely by no metric of, like, anybody's logic could ever be lower than, than 20, ever. Like, he's easily a top 20 player, but I would not put Bonofsky at number nine. Especially when his teammates, like Shrugger and Mela and Rando, are 30-something. Like, I don't know. That's crazy. Like, Shrugger also won that championship. Where's Shrugger? Is it, where, he's number 36. <laughs> so... I don't know. I feel like it's, it's definitely fair to move somebody like Eric into the top 10 over Bonanski. But Bonanski, definitely an incredible player, actually annoyed the fuck out of me when I played against him. <clears throat> Probably like the most annoying demo besides Habib that I played against. I guess he was like incredibly good. And here I'm going to piss you guys off again and say Siegel as number eight is a massive overrate. Hello, overrated. Absolutely a top 20 player, definitely not a top 10 player. Un undeniably true. Like he, he won two times. One time was... In season three, by the way, again, I don't know if you guys, season three, he might have won against Solid Snake on the Charge and Targe. Okay, so let's take that into consideration. So first at a non-LAN in like 2008. And then won one other time against Banny. But, not, but this is where, again, people like, oh, he won against Banny, but did he win against Clockwork and Banny? No, he didn't. So, like, I don't know. Was that HRG team as good as Freyotech? Like, do you rank all the wins against Banny the same? Like, because when we were on Freyotech, it's me, Banny, and Blaze. When he, when he won against HRG, it was him, Sizer, and, like, RR. And, like, I don't know. 
I mean, it was a win against Banny, but that was like definitely not the strongest Banny team. So, like, he literally beat somebody in season 15 who's not even on this list, which is a snub. I think RR deserves to be on this list, but literally one of the players he beat isn't even on this list. So, I mean, Siegel, I would put as, as like a top 20 player for sure. Maybe in terms of like skill, if I were to like make just a subjective, like who are my top 10 players that I've played against ever, I would have Siegel in there potentially. But like from like the logic of the list, I feel like Siegel at number eight is a gigantic overrate. Gigantic. It's, it's super fan service, for sure. Um, because he wasn't, I mean, it's hard to be like far and away the best roamer in the game, but like Siegel and, and Blaze were very close in impact and skill on rumor. Even when Siegel was like at his like prime in like ESCA season 15, 16, 17, whatever. Um, they were like very close in skill. Like Blaze was not like by any means like a hard number two or whatever um, in, in best like roamers in the game, you know? <clears throat> so, I don't know. I, I think that's like a huge overrate. Like I would definitely move Siegel and Badonski out of the top 10 for like Eric and like, I don't know, some other player that I would take from the, the 20s probably or the, the teens. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of skill, sure, maybe. Maybe I'd have him as like number eight in like my, my most skilled top 10 players that I ever played against in TF2, but definitely not if utilizing the logic of this, uh, of this list. This is just like a really big, like a, uh, like sort of like a fan ranking, I think, more than anything. Um, Yomps. <clears throat> Yomps number seven. Yomps, another one of those players as well, by the way, that I would have in potential top 10 like players I ever played against um, in the game. I remember... Uh, Season 21, when I came back, again, like, when Overwatch went down, closed beta went down or whatever, and I came back before the game came out. Um, I played that Ascent team that we beat in the Grand Finals. Was... Yomps was just fucking insane. Like, I remember, like, coming back, because I took a little bit of a break from TF2, and I was, like... It was just like immediately harder for me to play the game because I came from fucking Overwatch and like everything's like zip zapping like back and forth, AD spamming, like blinking back and forth um, compared to like the more slippery type movement that, that TF2 has. So I was already like not where I thought I wanted to be. And then like every time I played against Yomps, he just shit on me. Like in terms of like damage exchanges, like I knew every single time when it was Yomps, he would just like fucking shit on me. Um, and then I missed, unfortunately, the majority of his career because I was playing Overwatch. Um, but definitely, like, Hella Championships, one of the most talented, skilled players to ever play the game. Um, and was always, like, yeah, for me, like, one of the hardest players to play against. Even before he was, like, on a team that was not good. Like, even when he was, like... Um, when he was like playing earlier in 2015, like he was just like an insanely good. Yep. <clears throat> what made him so good? I don't know. He was just a good point and clicker. Like he was like one of those players that could like play soldier. Um, who could like play any of the projectile classes and like be just as like skilled as when he played scout. He just like had like a, a real mastery of TF2 where you could argue like someone like myself like is woof, unbelievably better at like scout compared to like fucking soldier or whatever. Um, but definitely deserve number seven. 
Uh, I wish I like got to new Yomps more. Um, but yeah, but definitely one of the, uh, the, the best, best players ever played TF2. So. Um, shade. Shade number six. Um, this is where it's always hard because you have to like take classes they're playing into account. Like when somebody in melee makes like a top 100 list and like somebody's looking at the top 10 melee players of all time. It's much easier to be like, number six, I don't know, you really think he should be six and this guy should be five? Because they play, like, the same game, you know? Like, there's nothing... They play, like, different characters, but, like, it's essentially the same game being played. Whereas, like, in TF2, there are, like... You're just a cog in the machine. Like, you have to do a certain thing for your team. So, like, if you're a roaming soldier, you're not going to have as much, like, impressive stats as, like, someone like myself who could just run around and, like, kill everything, you know? Um, but it's really hard to like rank, I agree, to like rank medics um, next to fragging classes. It's just really hard. It's like an impossibly difficult thing. For me, like most medics would always, I always tend to underrate medics like on purpose compared to fraggers because a lot of the time, especially in Shade's case, like they played medic because they were the best at medic and like I don't know. A lot of the times playing Medic on Banny's team is just like, take your free win. Um, so, I mean, he's definitely like the most decorated Medic that's ever played, I would say. Um, and was actually like surprisingly good at like different classes. Like he could play like Soldier and Demo. Um, he just, like, knew how to play the game. I mean, at a certain point, like, when you win 13 championships, you, like, definitely know how to play the game. So you can have, like, any amount of impact on, uh, on different classes. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Shade, I, w I would like to put medics at, like, I, I wish every installment had a medic at the top. So, like, number 20, number 10, 30, 40, 50. Because to me, like, if I was going to put Shade in the top 10, I just put him at 10. Because he was, like, really good, but it's hard for me to put Shade ahead of, like, R Blue, who was also, like, as good as Shade at Medic, honestly, but also was a really good soldier. Um, I don't know. Medic is weird. A lot, like, a lot of his wins are just, like, we felt like we couldn't lose that season <laughs> especially after like season um like season 17 18 just felt like you, we couldn't lose so i mean he definitely i would put him at like top 10 in terms of just like his achievements and like impact on the game but um it's hard for me to put him ahead of like some of the other top 10 players I mean, most medics would absolutely shine on a Banny team. I mean, they did. It becomes exponentially easier to play medic when you're playing with, like, the best fragging classes in the game. And that's just, like, sort of the way that it is. I don't know. So let's go to number five now. This is where shit gets really spicy. So we got Habib number five. I think Habib should be higher than number five. Um, just for, like, his utter dominance on demo um habib was like habib is just the most annoying demo i've ever played against um it's unfortunate that like all of that skill or whatever is simply just because the iron bomber is legal um but he's like really fucking good and, like, besides myself, like, the closest person to, like, Banny... Like, a lot of the time when you look at a Banny team, I feel like ever since I quit, especially, Banny teams are looked at as, like, just Banny teams. You know what I mean? 
Um, like Banny is just like the best player, and that's it. Like ba- Banny, oh Banny team, Banny's just gonna carry like these other five players, like which is always like disingenuous because like he purposely picks up really good players so that like he doesn't have to carry them. But like Habib is like the best player on that team. Like he's like the me of Demo Man, but like Demo Man is like so unbelievably like overwhelming as like a as a fucking class um that it's almost like even better right like because i was like obviously like like one and two with banning when we played together but like we're just playing scout which is like yeah i had like a lot of crazy like fucking kill streaks and like frag fucking fph and shit uh but like demo a really good demo just like takes over the entire fucking game And it's, like, very reminiscent of when Banny was the best demo in the game before he played Scout, but better. Because, like, Habib just runs around, like, killing everything. Um, So, like, in terms of, like, a top five, I would have him for sure higher than five. Um, Yeah, it's just unfortunate he would be even higher if the Iron Bomber were banned. Because I know he's really good at pipes, so. Um, Blaze number four. I would probably swap these two, but it, again, it's hard because Blaze is like, actually, no, 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 wait, just wait. So Blaze, one of my like favorite teammates to play with because he was like unimaginably chill. Like Blaze was like maybe the chillest person I've ever played with for like, for skill wise in terms of skill compared to, uh, other people he was just very quiet and would just do his job and would like not even talk to like to a fault sometimes like we would like lose mids and like i just want us to fucking win a mid so like on the way to mid i'm like so blaze where are you going this time you think oh i don't know top right i guess <laughs> like okay and then so like we make a plan around it because he would just like literally not come sometimes but he would still um he would still like take over games and blaze and i had like a very a uh, non-communicative synergy together. We would like not really talk to each other or like make plays like verbally, but we would always be doing the same thing, um, which I think is part of what made us like so good. Cause there wasn't like, there was never like a missed calm or like a misunderstanding, a verbal misunderstanding between us. It was just sort of like, we always kind of did the same thing and knew what we were doing. Um, he was like never like I'm jumping in, Matt, come in or whatever. Like he was like we would just do it, you know, um, which I think is very different to like TFT these days, where like everybody's like all about communication. Like you like need to communicate with your teammate. Like playing scout communicates with like Romer. Like I'm going in now. Like blah, blah, blah. like like we never did that on on Freyo with plays. He was just sort of like just knew what to do, and then I sort of just like knew what to do. So we were just really dominant. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I love Tyler. I wish he would uh, play again. Maybe that would uh, entice me to, to play again. But I think Blaze is like in a, in, in a fair spot. I would have him at number four. And I would probably swap the next person with Habib, if I'm being honest. Or even myself. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that. Um, oh, also, I, I've known Blaze for as long as I've known TLR, basically. I played with Blaze. I played b-ball with Blaze when I was, like, 15 years old. So. Uh, platinum number three. Here, time again. It's time again to annoy you guys. There is no fucking way that this guy is number three. You guys are out of your fucking minds. You're literally out of your fucking minds that he is number three. I saw people putting Platt at number two and it fucking blew my mind. And the craziest thing is, like, I was like thinking to myself, like, number two, what the fuck? And then everybody who's like, 
on the forms of like plat number two, plat number two. I like check their fucking profile and their account is made after plat quit, years after plat quit playing the fucking game. Like what the fuck do you know? Do you even watch the fucking game when he played? Okay, plat was really good, but mix up was notoriously an incredibly good team from like building block number one to six. They were like the most like skill tight team in the entire game. I don't hate mix up. Mix up was really fucking good. Like really fucking good. But the seasons I lost to mix up. Let me tell you guys who I lost I-46 to, okay? I hate Platt because he's from Florida. I actually don't mind Platt. Platt and I got along quite well because he thought I was really good, so he didn't shit talk me. Which in my book was a plus. At I-46, I lost to Platinum, TLR, Harblue, Ruin, Enigma, and Pure on Medic. Do you know who I had on my team? I had Tyrone and Mackie and Sizer. And Sizer was a very good player, but mechanically was not as good as Enigma and Ruin. That's who I lost. I, that's, those are the teams that like people look back and they're like, Platt? Platt's like the Banny of mix-up. That guy would just like trade seasons with the only one to challenge Banny ever. It's like, dude, of course. That, he had like the, mix-up had the best teams. And then in season 15, when they beat like that HRG Banny team, I think that team was even better. I'm sure, because that team had Siegel on it. I don't remember who they traded out for. No Ruin, right? Or was Ruin on that team? Oh, no Squid, right? Squid, they had Squid and Siegel, and Enigma. I don't know, that team was also just incredibly fucking good. Siegel, TLR, Platt, Squid, Enigma, Harblue. Harblue, like incredibly good medic, by the way. That team was also unbelievably like skill tight. Like the disparity between like Platinum, like could you even say Platinum was the best player on that team? Are you guys fucking crazy? Like everybody loves Siegel, right? Was Platinum that much better than Siegel? It's crazy. Like Platinum was very good and always one of the better players on his team. But in a team of like some of the best players assembled that have ever played the game, Platinum was barely better if at all than the rest of his team. They were just incredibly good across the board. And putting like Enigma at like, what is he, 15? And Platinum at number three is like, oh, I guess Platinum just carried mix up. That's like so disingenuous and not true. Like Platinum had some of the best players ever play the game on his team. Like the, the key difference between Platinum and Banny, especially back then, um, is that Banny was literally carrying noobs. Like Banny is on a team with Tyrone and Mackie, man. Like, are you guys out of your mind? He won, Banny won season seven with Giggly on his team. Wait, who, did someone read? I can't see. I don't know, if someone read it, thank you. I, I don't know. What's going on? Anyway. Unbelievable that you guys can like put Platinum at the same level as Banny simply because he beat Banny sometimes. Like it was way more common for players in general to beat Banny back then. And by the way, Enigma was one of those people that beat Banny every time as well. So every single time Platinum beat Banny, Enigma was there also beating Banny. So like, dude. <laughs> Massive overrate. Already, I would put Platinum at number five, Habib at number three, and Blaze at number four. Acting like I don't know who number two is.
but like from this list or whatever, like three through five, I would have platinum at the lowest one out of the out of the three by far. By far. Um. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, Plat, incredibly good player, but super overblown and so strangely like his skill is so strangely overrated because like most of the people who like argue for Platt being number two didn't even play the game. They didn't even play. They don't even know what the fuck's going on. Like I played against this guy and against all of his teams that he made and he was very good, but so was the rest of his team. Notoriously incredible. So I don't know. Also, he was on a team called the Virgin Police. Come on, dude. Number five, easy. Number two, Clockwork. So I think I'm overrated here, to be honest. I'll just start with that. Um, it's hard to rank myself, but I thought I was going to be like, Maybe I was, I thought I was definitely going to be behind Habib and maybe behind Blaze. And I thought I was also going to be behind Platt, but I think that's bullshit. Um, I would agree with myself as like a top five player and like a top one scout, I guess. But like, obviously the list doesn't really rank in that way. Um, but I've had, I had like a pretty successful career. Even before I was on Froyo Tech, like I basically did the YZ50 and came in season nine, which was my second ever invite season and I won LAN. So that was like my first LAN I ever went to and we won from like the fourth or third seed or something in season nine. Um, and then we lost season 10, which again, okay. I had CB, Tyrone and Mackie. CB was actually maybe the worst medic I've ever played with in my entire like life playing the game. Um, CB was like horrendous. And I, I lost against like a pretty stacked mix-up team, I would say. Um, and then I won season 11. I had like a really long period of time where like I just wasn't successful in invite because I just didn't play with those people, which honestly should affect, like which is why I would put like someone like Habib ahead of me because not that I think if Habib left Banny's team that he would be winning against Banny necessarily like he might be getting like second or third like I was getting but he the point is he stayed with Banny the whole time so there's no hypothetical here like he has just been dominating ever since you know what I mean um so for me like I left that team in like season 11 or season 12 to play with like the bro people um, and we had like a, a couple like just meme seasons. Like I was just like in college, like, and that's just like what I did in my free time. I just like played TF2 and like won third place prize money. <laughs> Free SEA where like I would just go to land and like make stupid fucking jerseys for myself. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't play like my last successful season before Freya Tech was season 12 or like second place at I-46. So, um, and then, you know, my, my Freyo Tech career speaks for itself. But I think I'm a little overrated here. I would maybe put myself really high just based on talent alone and, like, skill and, and potential um, skill and whatever. But I feel like I'm a little bit overrated here. Um, obviously, I thought this was really funny. You guys, like, suck so bad, dude. Look at these frag records. How have you guys not beaten me? I'm first, second, third, and fifth. Come on. For real? You can't get one other person to take third or second. It's going to be hard to take this one because this was like, people were like bad at Viaduct, so I was just like running around killing everything. This is like almost impossible to beat with the way that like invite matches are played now, but like, come on. Third, like at least like, I don't know. But I definitely think I was like the most dominant scout and scout diffed like the most uh, in my career. Oh my God, spoiler. Um, but I would say that like 
I'm a little bit overrated because in the grand scheme of things, I didn't play for that long with Rayo Tech and win for that long with Rayo Tech compared to like people like Blaze um, and Habib who just like just kept fucking winning like 18 championships, 14 championships. Like I have seven, you know, and that doesn't count like the Sevo and like the international tournaments and stuff. Like I've won like easily like 10 real championships, but I've only won like, you know, seven real ESCA championships. So. 100 people left after the spoiler. Um, so, spoiler. Banny number one. What else is there really to say? 32 seasons played. Made playoffs every single time he played. 25 championships. Um, this is probably one of his most impressive wins. Um, this one, I think season nine as well, honestly, with me, was one of his more impressive wins. Um, and then the Freya Tech wins are, you know, impressive, but hold less weight because we were already like such an established team of like dominance. Um, yeah, I mean, it's fucking Banny. You can't really like argue against it. Like there's no universe in which Banny is not number one. Um, I wish it were different. <laughs> Season 24, you definitely did not go 19 and 0. Oh my God. Falsified records. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's fucking Banny. So I think that that's pretty understandable. Not really much to say. Banny has been the most dominant player in TF2 since the very beginning. Was much better than Platt. Wasn't like the, the platinum of like his team or whatever. He was like, the best demo in the game, like a hard carry, carried people like way worse than him, and then just like snowballed his success into like easily the most decorated career um, in TF2. Hopefully that changes soon and like people start really stepping up and challenging him more and more. But something tells me a team with like Banny and Jay and, and Marmalu are the heavy favorites to win um, next season. So, and Habib. So, yeah. Uh, do I think Banny was a better scout than me? I mean, not in terms of scout, but as a player, uh, maybe. I mean, like, he was just so good at playing the game that, like, whatever, like, class he played, like, just, he could just take over the game. Um, but, like, in terms of, like, actual scout mechanics, I would say no. But, I mean, I don't even think he would disagree with that either. Um, yeah, I kind of want to make my own list, but I want it to be like top, like, I don't know of this list of this top 10 list or whatever. I would have Eric in there. I'd have Badonsky out. I'd have Siegel out. Um, who was in the. Yeah, Badonsky, Siegel. I would probably trade those out for Eric, at least. Oh, right, I can see the whole thing at the bottom. True, 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 true. Yeah, okay, so good call. Oh, let me go to the most recent one, I guess. Yeah, so if I were to... I would take Enigma and Eric and swap them with Siegel and Badonsky. I would probably swap Shade and Harblue. Platinum would be number five. I'd probably have it. I'd probably have Banny number one, Habib number two, me number three, Blaze number four, Platinum number five. J number six, Yom's number seven, sure. Um, Eric number eight, Enigma number nine, and Harbour number 10. Or sorry, J number 10, Harbour number six. Um, where would Moose and Dave AC go? His Moom on this list? Yeah, you want to see Mooma? Here, ready? Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da
There he is! Oh my goodness. Um, would I put Seagull top 15? Yeah. Um, I would say so. At least top 20. I don't know if I would put him at, at 15. The thing about Seagull is really he just did not play and win as much as people. People have like this weird thing where they hear the name Seagull and obviously like Seagull, very good gamer, really popular player, like both in TF2 but also on Twitch. And people like assume that like he must have just been like this dominant TF2 force. But outside of the like boomer era of TF2 where like people could like, you know, again, like we have our own opinions and reservations about like 2008 to 2010 TF2. Outside of that era, he played, he won one season ever. And it was against um, a Banny team that was so bad like compared to the rest of his Furry Tech seasons, that it was the last time that Banny like really shuffled a team up. Like every other time like a team got shuffled up with Banny, it was like because people like kind of quit or whatever. Like after we got third that season when like Banny cut Ash in the middle of the playoffs match, like we just quit. So he like made his own team and then like made adjustments like after. But, like, that season of, like, ESCA that they lost to um, Seagull's mix-up was, like, they just straight up, like, quit the game. Like, or, or he just straight up, like, took the roster and, like, tore it asunder and made his own, like, roster of Freya Tech. Um, so, I mean, like, it wasn't, like, the worst Banny team ever or anything. Like, it was certainly, like, a good team. But uh, you can't really compare it to, like, the Freya Tech era of... of uh, of Banny's like dominance. So, I mean, he won one time it was against Banny, but like that win against that Banny team is less impressive than like witnesses last win against Banny's team. Right. So I don't know. Um, it's just like really like a fan servicey pick, I think to put Seagull at number eight. Cause he just, he really just didn't play that much. And, like, I, I honestly think he would, like, agree. Like, he, he knows he didn't play TF2 that much. Like, he was firmly a TF2 player, but he did not... He not only didn't win that much, but didn't play that much. He also, like, he, he spent, like, time playing on, like, what's what was that team? Fully Torqued or whatever? Like, Pure's team in, in ESEA. Like, they got, like, fourth place. They were, like, a fourth place team or something. Like, a lot of his time was not spent at, like, the top level like winning against the top players shrugger does need to be much better than 36 um i know melee didn't play for that long but don't you think 34 is a bit harsh um yeah i mean it's hard for me to imagine though because i have to reassess everything i need to like change everything so like for for melee's case i would have like shrugger should easily be in the 20s um at worst and Mela would probably, to me, like land around number 30. Um, like I'd probably put Mela ahead of like Psy guy. Just because Mela was like, like a contender against Banny for so long. But like, I, I think he would land like around this area for sure. It's just that, like, the, the Shrugger ranking and, like, the Dewana ranking, like, throws everything off. Because I would put both of those players, like, well ahead of both Brando and Mela. But that's, like, another inconsistency, right? Like, Shrugger 36, and people were arguing, me, arguing with me about Bedonsky number 9. Like, how can you truly argue this? Like, Bedonsky was unbelievably good at demo man but like i don't know like shrugger easily lands himself at like a top two top three at worst player on that team and he's behind both mela and rando and well behind badonski well behind badonski <clears throat> would i swap botmo with corso where's corso 41 corso 41 
I mean, I feel like bot mode is better than 41, but I also think bot mode is not... Like, I wouldn't put bot mode ahead of Laz. Or, like... I mean, like... Jay is hard because he hasn't, like, played that long. But, like, Yite, Shrugger, Sizer... Like, I would put all of those people probably over bot mode. Just in terms of, like, legacy in the game. Um... But Corsa as well, probably, yeah. But I don't think any of these players should be 41, so I'd have to, like, re... I'd have to change everything. This upside. Did Tag make the... Yeah, Tag is, yeah, 83, which is also a pretty large snub. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, do you think Rakuso has, like, a more long-lasting career or like a more like legacy a better legacy than tag like, i don't know it seems kind of strange <clears throat> yeah i mean j30 is always going to be insane to people who played the game now i think for myself like i said this before in terms of skill like i would put j like top five most skilled players i played against are like YZ50, um, I guess just NA, because like Mike is one of like the more skilled, like Mike Sheep, Yuki, but like that's just making things too complicated. So I'd put like, like YZ, J, um, do the list here. Ruin. I put like YZ50, J, Ruin. Um, maybe like Enigma Seagull or Yomps. Probably like, yeah, probably like Yomps Enigma or something. It's like the, the five like most like skilled slash annoying players that I played against in uh in tf2 but like i haven't played against laz enough so it's you know why not banny i didn't really play against banny that much honestly i played more with banny than against him so <clears throat> but yeah i don't know like jay is is definitely one of the most skilled players in, in tf2 ever for sure but like again, like there are like good players ahead of Jay. It's not just like randoms, you know what I mean? I mean like bot mode, I don't like probably could be swapped with Jay, but like there are like really they have like a lot of wins and a lot of legacy in the game. So it's hard. Um Sizer number twenty eight. Like is Sizer really that much less of a legacy than Carnage? Like, Carnage, like, destroyed the game for the first, like, year and a half. But, like, Sizer was not only his competition at the time, but then went on to win way more against him, too. So, to me, it even feels like Sizer is, like, a bit of a snub. Because Sizer should be, like... On the cusp of twenty, I think, and not like below people like like Tim, and Carnage probably, and Bot Mode. Like Sizer played for so long, and he, especially in a in a list that uses the era that Sizer played, um, as like the golden era, to have him so low or so like poorly ranked compared to the people ahead of him, it's it's a little bit strange. <clears throat> who do i think has the most potential of taking banny's throne i mean the people he's playing with <laughs> so i don't know banny used to have this thing where he used to like like feel ashamed or like not want it. like i remember when dummy quit after the first season of Freyotech. we didn't 
want to pick up Dewatna because it would just kill we, we were afraid it would kill 20b but especially it would like kill their chances of being like more relevant because like Dewatna was so good but we picked him up anyway now I feel like <laughs> Banny shamelessly does that shit he has Marmalou Habib and Jay on his team like I think any team that challenges Banny like needs to have Jay on the other team so They did lose him, but a few months ago, yes. But Jay and Marmalou were not on the team. So. The current Froyo roster is insanely good. Like, I think. Like, if Jay is going to be playing the game at all, if you want Banny to lose, he needs to be on the other team, basically. All that just to beat Platt. God, I hate you mix-up fanboys, dude. You guys are so weird. Because the weirdest thing... The weirdest thing is that I don't... Yeah, purple shirt is like number 60-something, I think. 70-something? I can't. Where is he? Gar, 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 gar. Yeah, 74. <clears throat> Um, but like I respect the fuck out of mix up as a team but like people act like fucking platinum was like the carry of the team which is so fucking it's not only delusional but it's like insulting to the people that he played with it's crazy because their team was so good and there was never a time where platinum was like destroying the entire league like at um like like taking his whole team, putting them on his back in his little backpack and like taking off to first place. Like that just never happened. His team was fucking incredibly good. All the time. Wall guy's like 91. Hmm. I, you think Platinum was by far the best on Mixup? That is delusional. That is delusional. Platinum was arguably the best player on that team. Arguably. And most of the time, I would say no. Like, on a team with, like, TLR, Seagull, Enigma, Ruin, the fact that you could just be like, oh, Platinum was, like, far and away the best player on that team is, like, delusional. There's just no way. Like, he might have been, but it was very close. And, like, personally, playing against, like, Ruin was always harder than playing against Platinum. So, I don't know. That just seems, it seems weird because most of the time, people who, like, overrate Plat, like, didn't even play the game when he played the game or, like, watched the game when he played the game. They heard, like, some story about how, like, Platinum and Banny were, like, rivals. But, like, the... I think the story lacks a lot of context. Can I do a best person for each role? Yeah. I mean, like... Um, best players each role. Um, okay. 
I would say like scout. Three is so hard. I feel like five is like better, but on scout, like just in terms of like the class itself, I would put myself, YZ50, and probably, probably ruin. On soldier, I would say. It's so, uh, I feel like I have to do pocket soldier and roaming soldier. Right? Because it's like so, they just like fulfill different things. Like pocket soldier, I would say like Platt when he played TLR. I feel like nobody plays pocket. Oh, Yomps. Yeah, probably Yomps. Um, Romer, probably Blaze Seagull. Throw some names at me. I mean, I guess I could say like Jay, but like that's not, I feel like Jay Maybe I would put, I don't know. I don't have enough like experience with Jay. So I'd probably put like Laz or something. Demo would be like, I mean, obviously Banny, Habib. And like getting like the last in there is like really hard. Because there were so many good demos that played. Like, I'd say, like, maybe Bedonsky with, like, really, um, really close. I would also put, like, Dewatna flat. Banny's not a top demo anymore, but I'm, I'm speaking in terms of, like, legacy on the class. Like, Banny was, like, the first unbelievably good demo. But I guess, honestly... It'd be better if I just did that and then put literally put Banny at the end of every single one of these states. Because <laughs> he could probably like, or at least like demo and scout. Because he's just like, I don't know. It's so hard to put Banny like the best at like a, a class because he's just like, I think part of what makes him so good is just his ability to like play the game. It's so hard. <clears throat> what did what did this person say against Jay? Care about Jay? Yeah, Jay just doesn't have like. I mean, it's true. He doesn't. Um, sniper. I mean, it's hard to even put. I just wanted to write something before medic because medic is so troll. But I mean, obviously, if we were doing international, I'd put like sheep and shit here. But in terms of NA snipers, who the fuck was even good at NA? Or it's Sniper in NA. I feel like nobody in NA even played Sniper. Like, EU and, and Australians played Sniper to, like, a fault. And NA players never played Sniper. Like, Justin. Yeah, Justin. Slam, maybe? Yeah, maybe Alpha. <laughs> Those were probably the best snipers in the game, right? I mean, like, maybe Carnage, maybe myself, but, like, I wasn't, I was just, I was just a big brain sniper. I knew how to get consistent picks. These people just, like, ran out and headshot everything. Like, that was never my thing. I just, like, knew where to stand, when to take peeks, and shit like that. I was, like, not that good at sniper. Um... Medic. I mean, Shade. Probably Brad. 
terms of legacy, right? And like Power Blue, probably. <clears throat> that would probably be like my top three, like legacy wise, in every class in the game. Also, Banny. Banny owns a medic. Um. Oh, Lol yeah, Lol guy is really good too, but he just hasn't played long enough. Lol guy is like insanely good at medic, so. Best engineer, I, unironically, engineer, Banny. It's not even close. Best spy. I mean, stabby, stabby. <laughs> Why did I write best? <sighs> Who the fuck? Didn't like hard blue play? Maybe Mackie. I don't. I don't fucking know. Who has like a legacy on spy? Yeah, I don't know. This is just a meme. Um, if I were to make a top ten. What should I do? Like top 10. All right. A top 10 for me looking, I have the, the list on my screen down here that you guys can't see. I would have like 10 shade, nine. Eric, eight Enigma. Seven Yomps. Six Harb. Action. Ugh, I don't want to piss you guys off too much. I don't, I don't want to piss you guys off too much. But <laughs> um. <laughs> um. No, I mean, I guess I put Plat at five. And then... It's either me or Blaze, but I'll just put me at four. That's the list. Like it or not, that's the list. Most kissable, an invite? Um... I don't know, man. None of none of the above. Too nerdy. Um. Yeah, no, I, I would say that's that's a good list. Shade is number ten simply because medic is is a troll. So to avoid putting medic ahead of any of like the fraggers, like I just put him at ten. Yeah, probably Mela. Mela or Blaze? Blaze was just cute, bro, you know? It was like a Justin Bieber type thing. Before Justin Bieber, like, got tatted up and stuff. Um. I would say Harb is, is this... I might... I could, like, switch... Like... Harb and Yomps maybe would make more sense, but Harb is just like a really good player. Like it, it's not just like his ability to play both like Roamer and Medic at a really high level is pretty much unheard of in the game. Like no one else was like could play both of those roles as well as Harblu could. Um, so I definitely see Harb as like a top ten player. Not sure if I put him like ahead of Enigma or Eric, but it's like kind of splitting hairs at this point. The important thing is Plat is definitely not number two, no matter what you guys say. Um, and I would also put keep uh, I put like.
Hmm. If I were to fill out the whole top 20, I think Lansky's in a good spot, to be honest. Um, probably TLR. Actually, uh, no, let's put TLR in there. Um, who's the other person I booted? Oh, Badonsky. MGE top 10 list. Why is he put these easily number one? Oh, yeah. Where where the fuck is Ruin? Oh, wait. Ruin is 16. Um, Steve! Top three best DM mechanics for Soldier PLZ. Where is my fucking... I don't have the fucking thing on. Who donated? At me like five times in the chat so I can read your name. With your amount of money. <laughs> this fucking scene doesn't have the uh, alert thing on. Um, <clears throat> Number fourteen, <laughs> C four the win. Thank you for the one hundred bits. No, oh, Tyrone's easily number fourteen or fifteen, bro. I'm just trying to figure it out. <clears throat> I could on. I feel like you could honestly argue for like. Carter for one of these, but probably not. Maybe like ruin, and then like wait, where's Slim? Oh, there we go. That's what I was missing one of them. All right? Wait, did I already name Slim? No, I didn't. Right? Yeah, okay. That would be like a, a pretty solid top 15 for me. <clears throat> top 10 oh what's up dan top 10 arm wrestlers an invite i would say i mean i don't know fucking zalox had a hell of a fucking arm wrestler form Probably like flat. Probably like Justin White because he's like seven feet tall. Yeah, Relic for the same reason. Dude, Zalox. Whew. I mean, back then I was, I didn't even really like work out or anything. I got much stronger after that. I started going to the gym and shit. But I think I put up a pretty good fight. Considering I was just like some college kid that just played TF2 all day. You know, I never jumped in TF2. It made everyone predictable. It does to a degree. 
What's my personal favorite match I ever played? I think the entirety of I-46 was like my favorite tournament ever. Because I was just like insanely good. Insanely good back then. Um, at that tournament specifically. It was like every, like the stars were like aligning, you know? Like it was my first time in like England, which was super cool. I was like in a big land venue, like meeting a bunch of people online that like I hadn't met before. So it was like just a nice like social buff. You know, I was like feeling good. Um, I had like a Copperberg cider. I don't know if you guys have ever had that, but they had that at the event and it was so good. Um, I had like that one, that one beer deep, like feeling of like, I'm the best player in the land venue. And like, I don't know, I just had everything going on. You should go down the list. You should. You should make your own reaction to the list. It's good content, bro. That's straight up what you would do, though, for sure. Like most, pretty much 80% of this list, you would say, who the fuck is this? I remember DL, man. Would Indus be good? I'm pretty sure Indus was in that arm wrestling thing, wasn't he not? He got fucking destroyed. <laughs> He's like a twig. Um, Dave AC should definitely be on this list. Moose should... I think, I mean, Dave AC is a huge snub, but I also think Moose is a huge fucking snub. I, I actually cannot believe Moose is not on this list. I think like part of it is maybe he confused Terry with the fact that his name is never Moose. But Moose is like was an insanely good player. I actually can't believe that he's not on this list. That like blows my mind. Cuz like he he fulfills every like requirement to be on this list, you know? Like he played in like the golden no, Phantoms not on it either. He like fulfilled like the golden era or whatever thing like he played you know when like everybody was really good according to like the author um but he you know he beat me and banny at lan like he was a really good player yeah moose was was the homie i love moose i was saying moose was like a big inspiration for me when i was like first getting into tf2 like um, I remember when I was like, I must've been like 16 or some shit. Uh, but I, maybe it was TLR. It was either like me or Droog or like me and TLR or something, but we were in like a DM server, like 2v2ing, 2v2 scout against Enigma and Moose. And they were just shitting all over us. Um, and that was like before I even like really played scout. I think that's what like kind of uh, inspired me to play scout more but moose was insanely good moose was like the original like mg lord like back then like mg wasn't what it is now where like people play like scout v scout on like badlands middle or whatever it was like ammo mod and like moose was like an ammo mod god back then it was really fucking good Um, TLR was an inspiration to steal trophies I wasn't that was like the season that I didn't make land I made land season 9 but I, I heard about that that was pretty funny you TLR it's a character man You should have stole the rewind trophies, man. You carried. Where does the virgin police fit into this shit? That's such an old name. Like, uh, fucking mummy Valorant player that was on Envy played on that team when he must have been like a toddler. <laughs> he was like literally like a 13 year old virgin playing on the Virgin Police. 
Yeah, Mummy played TF2 a long time ago. He, he was one of the virgins on the Virgin Police. Yeah, but he played a long ass time ago. <clears throat> that was like before things like popped off though, or like grew. Like he was not, he didn't play for that long, but he was originally, I, forget, I don't know if it was Fastfire that he was friends with. He either had like a relative on the team or like a friend on the team. Um, but yeah, there were like a lot of people like from like that pop up in my mind that I wish were on this list somehow, like sequel. Yeah, sequel. Where the fuck is Deller? Um, like Shore Shots. Um, yeah, there there are like a lot of really old players that I wish somehow found their way onto this list. Valen on the list, but not Uv. Valen, I, I mean, honestly, to me, Valen and Uv are like the same player. Like, I can't even really give you like a difference between those two as players. Like, the, to me, they were just like the same player. But like, arguably, like Valen knew, like he, I think he was more of like a leader in in the team. So, I don't know. But it's like so hard to like put, like make a top 15 of anything, you know? Because like Carnage's top 15 would be like way different than mine. Like it's so hard, like Eric literally, like what did he win? 13 championships, we were talking about it before. And he's like 14 on, on the list. And like, I don't know, I guess you can call him like Mickey Mouse rings, but that's like a crazy amount of wins to be 14th. You heard Sizer was, I don't think Sizer was a better player than you, but I think in terms of like how long he played, he deserves a higher ranking than what he got. Because I never, I was never, a, I was never high on uh, Sizer's skill. I read that in chat, but I feel like that didn't happen. I don't remember that ever happening. Or that ever being like a thing that anybody talked about. <laughs> I hope it did. I just happen to be playing at a time when the game is more popular. I mean, sure. But I mean, like, that's like the problem with lists like this is like they're all hypotheticals. You know what I mean? Like, had Carnage kept playing, like, would he have been, like, the player that Sizer was after he quit? Like, logically, sh probably, but, like, you can't, like, the hypothetical just makes it hard. Like, that's why lists like this just suck in general. Or, like, why there's so much debate about it, because you have to avoid as many hypotheticals as possible. You can't just be like, oh, you know, this guy would have been, like, Reptile was, like, an incredibly good, like, Reptile was so good at Soldier that I, it would have surprised so many people who, like, play Soldier now and, like, whose experience is, like, watching, like, Laz and Marmalu and, like, Jay and shit play Soldier. You would be surprised by how good Reptile was at Soldier, like, in terms of just his, like, raw mechanical ability on the class. Like, he was really fucking good. So it's, like, you could make the argument that Reptile, like, would have been, like, a a name stay basically or a mainstay on on like the list as soldier he would have been like a fucking top 10 soldier all time if he kept playing but he didn't so it's like you know it's hard it's hard to be like oh yeah we have to put reptile like top 10 because reptile like would have been the best if he kept playing it's like yeah well that just defeats the whole purpose of like a list because it needs to go like it needs to have some type of like logical like bearing to it otherwise you're just like rattling off players you know which player had the most dominant impressive performance over the course of one tournament 
Uh, I don't know. Like, I think my I-46 tournament was pretty dominant, but I didn't win. I think my stats were pretty dominant that tournament. Um, I don't know. I wonder what YZ50 stats were in Season 7. I think Reptile, or I think Relic should have been higher. I think I said I, like Relic could have been higher. Because Relic kept playing too for like a little bit longer than you did. I think I have Seagull here, don't I? Oh, I don't. <laughs> Seagull should be here <laughs> somewhere. Uh... I don't know. I would have like Seagull like here ish on the list. I mean, I think the equalizer clip was kind of memey, but I think his career as a whole was better than what it, it should have been. Or represented better. Best waddlers of all time? Probably like Tic Tac or some shit like that. Yeah, I would say Seagull is more of like a... I put him more around like from 15 to 20. Because the list has him at 8. Which is like definitely way too high. I think like Seagull would 100% agree with that. He would like 100% be like, how the fuck am I number 8? Like he really didn't play that much. Like pretty much... If you put Seagull at number 8 you could like attribute the same logic to like YZ50 or some shit who also barely played and won like one time um, like pretty dominantly. So, and I, I wouldn't put like YZ50 at number eight. Was RR a better roamer than Blaze? I would say definitely not. Yeah, Wonderwall is number 51, I think. He was the last person I ended uh, the last reaction on. Wonderwall was also really good. Damn, what do you think about everybody on the forums wanted to put platinum at number two? Thoughts? No, Moose is not on this list. This is the biggest snub of all time. Would you put him at number two, though? Thank you. You should do your list. Dude, this shit's fun, man. You get you get to trigger so many people in chat by doing a list like this. I said plot shouldn't be number two, and like everybody in my chat was like freaking out about it. And calling me salty about like mix up or some shit. And I, I like said like Seagull shouldn't be top ten and they were freaking out. You should you should sit down, drink some beer, and do your own reaction. It just takes so much time though. Talking about this shit forever. Like Platt, because it was very interesting to watch the grand final between mix up and Yeah, I agree. I mean Platt was really good. 
but like mix up as a whole was really good so i don't know <clears throat> the forums have like this weird thing where like platt should be like way higher than all his teammates but that's like ridiculous because his teammates were like half of the reason why he was so successful You think Wise Fifty is better than Ruin? Yeah, I I agree, but like I think, as like a competitor, like legacy wise, I would have Ruin ahead of of YZ. I mean, like my own bias would put YZ ahead of Ruin, as like a this this is like okay to be clear, this is like a top top fifteen, like like legacy, like using like using some amount <laughs> of like achievements like you know logic etc like this is not like my personal bias top 15 i mean it is my personal top 15 but it's using like some amount of like achievements and like legacy and like whatever um if like i made my own um yeah, top 16. Okay, I'll just take Siegel's name off the, the screen for you. If I made it like my own bias, like who was really good, like skill wise, it would look like different for sure. Is why I definitely put YZ, like skill wise, like I would put him ahead of Ruin for sure. I know, Gavin, Gavin's one of the most uh, what ifs. The biggest what ifs in, in TF2. He could have played and been really good and he just didn't. Is MYC50 a dad now? No. Whatever happened to, to Dante? Like the scout Dante? I don't know. Just stop playing. Dante was really good too. But I feel like most people don't even know he existed. So, Blaze was so good. Yeah, Blaze was really good. What if Rafa played in TF2? I don't know, man. What if... What if Cypher played TF2? If I put EU players in there, would any be in the top five? Yeah, probably. But it's hard because... Like, it's like a pipe dream, like super idealistic to want to do like a top 100 EU NA because we just haven't played enough tournaments against each other. I mean, we played like a good amount, but it's not on a, like a regular basis. So it's like hard to, to really tell compared to like Melee where like in Smash, if you're like one of the best in EU, you're like competing at like, I mean, at least before COVID, you're competing at like most of the events um, that all the NA players play at. So it's like tough. <clears throat> Do I think Banny could have been the Western goat of Overwatch? No. Remember when Rafa played Overwatch? Yeah. Yep. Rafa was good at Overwatch. Rafa's a cool guy. I only know him in a small capacity though I think I hung out with him a lot at E-League when we went for Overwatch when he was on Liquid or whatever I just can't believe I just can't believe there are people that ask me if Banny could have been like the best Overwatch player in the game like what does that even mean like even if I had the most positive opinion of Banny ever the only thing I have to go off of is how good he is at TF2, which is just a completely different game from Overwatch. And also Overwatch is like, has much more like, um, 
has like much more precision weapons than TF2 does. Like there's no soldier in fucking or demo in, in fucking uh Overwatch. And like a lot of like the aiming on scout and stuff that like people do, especially Banny, is very different from like what like the skill sets you need to be a really good hit scan player in Overwatch. So. Justin White is probably the GOAT frag video maker. Yeah, I, I feel like he's not being sincere. <laughs> I think maybe he trolled all of you because there's just, that's just like such, like you would have no way to tell if that was possible or not. And it's also like, I don't know. This is why I wish like most TF2 players like played a game that was more popular than TF2 so you could like really see how many talented fucking FPS gamers are out there. Especially like from from regions that you don't even that you weren't even aware of. Like the the Korean TF2 players like became unbelievably good Overwatch players. And like I I don't know, I've seen some of like the best like gamers, like FPS gamers like that I've ever seen in Overwatch. It just sucks that they're playing against fucking shields and PC spam and shit. I mean, even in 2017, that would have been an insane statement. That's crazy. Like, first of all, like, calling yourself like a goat of a game that had, at that point in 2017, only had been out for a year <laughs> is crazy. But also, like, the game had enough time to develop where, like, they were already... That's, like, actually when, like, Western Overwatch was, like, at its peak. Every other year was just taken over by Koreans, pretty much. So... My stream is so bright. Yeah, I mean, there's a there is a notepad up on the screen. Why didn't I go far in Overwatch? I mean, technically, I did. So, <clears throat> Pine, yeah, Pine, Pine is an insane gamer, but so are like. There are so many like Korean hit scan players that are just fucking insane. They're just so fucking good. <laughs> What's up, trip? Yeah, I agree. Tifu is actually straight up snubbed from this list. Because everybody on this, like, everybody in the community likes to, like, harp on these, like, hypotheticals. What if Tifu played TF2? Like, the fucking goat of, like, BRs, dude. Like, can't, wouldn't he at least be, like, in the top 100 if he played? Come on, man. And fucking Tifu snub. A lot of people. Okay, I was in a fucking hotel room. I think it was Fights Land. And I was in like a hotel room with like Fragile, Marmaduke. We're just like pounding back IPAs, like heavy as fuck beers, just to make sure that we felt like absolute shit the next day. Um, and I think it was Fragile that asked if like more people played TF2, like, do you guys think that like this the top players would be like the same? And I was like, fuck no, you know they're fucking crazy, like. There are so many people from so many different games, dude. It's literally just probability. It has nothing to do with, like, who those specific gamers are or, like, 
the skill sets of like their fucking FPS gaming or whatever the fuck. It's literally just statistical. It's just probability wise. If TF2 were like a really big game, so many of the people who you see as like top 100 players in this game would not be top 100 players. That's literally just reality. There's no other way to put it. That's just the way that it is. Like, it's not like a bunch of people from around the world tried TF2 one time. They were like, oh, shit's just too hard, man. And then they quit. And then we were left over as like the only players who were good enough to play the game. Like, no one played it. So like, literally anybody, like, t it's not a meme that like Tifu would have been like a really good player if he played TF2. Because he's already proven that he's like a really good player in games with like hell of people that play the game. So like, it's just, it's not even like a meme. It's just like reality. Like, it's just the way that it is. Any Apex Legends aimers that catch my eye? I mean, yeah. Like Nathan. Asu, obviously, but he plays more than just that. of Zen asked what was my opinion on Corsa he sucks <clears throat> the best overall gamer I don't know man was Moomin notable in this game yeah he's number 95 number 95 in the rankings so clearly What do I think about Flippy? Really good sniper. Am I Spanish? I am Italian and Portuguese. Or whatever. <laughs> However you say that in a sensical accent. Where do I put Muma on the on my list? Uh, I don't know. Probably like at least 60. You know, like number 60. Something like that. What's up, Justin? The list came out, bro. Best casters? I don't know, probably like Gex. Seabear. Leo Geo. There were a lot of really good casters. That's actually one of the biggest losses, I think, in TF2. Uh, in, like, modern TF2 is, is the casting is... just It just doesn't sound as professional as, like... We used to fake that we were, like, an actual eSport. Vinny the boss. Like TF2 used to like try to like sound like professional and shit. Like used to like, like the pictures of people used to, this is like the thing that like really make, like when I watch like the RGL grand finals, I'm watching two casters and like one of their like profile pictures is like a fucking like polar bear or some shit. And I'm like, at least put your fucking like, Give me like a person's like headshot, like some like a fucking t-shirt, like maybe their real name next to like their gamer tag or something. Like what the fuck? Like I'm used to watching like TF2 with like, like Gex had the most like professional sounding TF2 caster voice ever <laughs> for someone who just casted to like a thousand people max. 
you know, like anime profile pictures. Like, it's just like, dude, like, give me your, give me your person and like your name at least. And so like, I don't know. That's like the biggest loss that like modern TF2 has for sure is like the casting is just like not on the same level. Even like C Bear and like uh, DJC were like, they they had the weird profile pictures too. Sea bears was literally just like a bear or whatever, but it, it sounded like they had like the radio voice, you know. Yeah, sideshow. I mean, of course, but I'm thinking more from like an NA perspective. Thoughts on melee casting? I don't think melee casting is that bad. I mean, it's not like as professional. But it's very, because like Melee is like a, an in-person game, like you, I don't know. There's like a level of like authenticity and shit to it a lot of the time. Because they're just like there in person, like casting with each other and shit. I don't know. It's definitely like less professional than like something like CS or something, you know. But it's still, it has like a, an element of like realism that like TF2 casting just doesn't have. Too good. Yeah, too good. Dude, honestly, I say this all the time to Sideshow. Um, it's definitely mainly a troll, but it's like, <laughs> I always say that, like, <laughs> his success. I say this to Bren, too. It's totally not true, but their success is, like, all on their fucking accent. And I swear to God, British people make, at least for myself, make the best casters. I, I fucking hate the American accent when people cast. So it, it always has like a level of authenticity when, when British people cast, man, I swear. Like it's... To other British people, they probably sound like idiots. But to me, super insightful. Bring back the transatlantic accent. I mean, literally like the best American accents are like the ones that they don't use like a transatlantic accent, but they like, it's like the same timbre. You know what I mean? They're like deep voices speaking from like their dive for like, just like an NBA caster, you know, just like fucking really deep, like full voices. Like that's the best American caster voice. Um, but British people can do it with like any, any uh timbre to their voice they just speak and it sounds like they're they know their shit similar goat caster similar is not a, the goat caster i have never not a fan of the casting i think the best cs casters that i've ever heard are like I think Sponge and Machine are probably my favorite duo that's ever casted in CS. And then maybe like Bardolph and uh, DDK. I've always liked DDK's casting. I think it's really chill. Um, but there's like a level of chillness to the CS casters, I think, that, that Valorant for... Like when CS casters switch to Valorant, it's like, I don't know if it's like something that like Riot tells them to do or it's like maybe it's just like the pacing of the game, but everything feels way more frantic and screamy. Everything in, like, Valorant is, like, just screaming, hyping up at, like, fucking nothing. Just, ah! And it's like, what the fuck? Like, I'm just trying to watch the fucking Counter-Strike. I thought I was watching new Counter-Strike. But instead, it's like I'm watching, like, TF2 casters cast Valorant. Yeah, Machine is crazy good. Yeah, Mela... Um, does Valorant content with uh, Sideshow Bren. Yeah, Wyatt. What is my favorite match of all time? 
Well, this one time I played a tournament called I-46. Late night Korean match that two American guys. Was it what's his name? Um, I'm blanking on his fucking name. Achilles. Achilles is a really good caster, I think. <laughs> yeah. No, for real though. Like, Shungars would be way worse if he didn't have like a, a valley accent. Like, if you took the same timbre of his voice and told him to cast without the valley coming in, I'd be like, eh. It'd be like asking me to cast. Like, uh, I just don't have the right voice for it, you know? Did I like I-46 over I-52? I mean, in terms of my own performance, probably. The thing is, like, I-46 just had, like, like, a magical feeling to it because it was, like, the first time any of us, um, I mean... Maybe I can't speak for them, but certainly the first time I've ever been out of the country. Um, and it was like just to like a really cool event, like things where like the money was handled for us and like the, the housing and, and everything was handled. So it was just like meeting a bunch of people I, I hadn't met before from like the EU scene, you know, like being able to like actually legally drink at the time because I wasn't old enough to legally drink in America. So it was just like the ability to like go and like buy a cider and like, you know, hang out with people I didn't know before. And then it was just like a really cool feeling that like I-52 didn't have as much of because I had already experienced it in I-46. But yeah, I-52 was really cool and that it had the Australians for sure. That when Darn slammed his desk, I have no idea. The Aussies were really cool too. Sheep comes in my chat sometimes. I still, I've messaged um, Aporia somewhat recently, <laughs> a year ago or something. But do American lands or Euro lands smell worse? All lands smell terrible. People need to like, whatever the amount of deodorant that you think is acceptable to bring, bring like twice or three times that to every land event you go to. Oh, sheep is for sure a top 100. Un undoubtedly. It's mainly deodorant. I mean, like, yeah, like bringing like extra pairs of clothes and stuff, but you're not going to, even if like you showed up at land and you wore the same, like, uh, set of clothes every single day you wouldn't smell that bad if you just showered and put on deodorant overwatch lands didn't really smell i mean it wasn't really like a land in the same way like you don't sit in like a big arena with a bunch of other people around you like you have your own like hotel and like you don't hang out around the computers unless you're playing, you know? Yeah, I mean, people just, I mean, I, I guess I get it. Like they can't, they're always gonna sweat, you know? People are gonna sweat, they're gonna smell bad, but. Well, you just bring a ample amount of deodorant and you're good. I mean, yeah, I, I sweat a lot too. Sometimes you just gotta shower multiple times. I think the biggest thing is deodorant though, honestly. Because like even if you're sweating, like what's really gonna make you smell is like your armpit. Like typically you're not gonna be like, like you might smell like sweat or whatever, but that's just like a salty smell, you know? 
like the real issue is like like the bo is is the most uh like sometimes you know sometimes you're gonna sweat and like smelling people who are sweating is like whatever <laughs> Big brain. Top five most hygienic players. I don't know. I think everybody in TF2 is actually pretty hygienic. At least like in a small land capacity. Like ESCA lands, I don't think anybody was really gross. Who has the best movement? Like Shrugger? Or like Banny or something? Do I want a pub? I don't want to do. Boot up the Slippy? I fucking wish. I need a GameCube controller. It's been a problem of mine. For a year now. Um... Alright, I might just call for tonight though. I did a lot of fucking talking and I feel tired. Um... I'm gonna find a like a, an acceptable amount of uh, content and then move it over to YouTube. I don't know when I'm gonna start and stop it, but I will try to get that uploaded by like tomorrow. If anybody wants to watch it on YouTube, I know I had that uh, suggestion last time, but I'm gonna upload it tomorrow. PM Weed, thanks for the Twitch Prime or the sub. This oh no, it is Twitch Prime sub. <clears throat> Thanks for the time sub. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get it uploaded by maybe tomorrow. Um, I could do different vids. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about doing. I was thinking about doing just like the top 50 and then like just the fucking rambling afterwards as a separate vid in itself. Um, that was Carnage. Uh, was he streaming? I always expect to see him on the thing. What's Bren doing? Bran. Oh, he's playing Celeste. Oh, but if I host Brandon, he's just going to get a bunch of TF2 fucking beeps in the shit. I don't think he'd appreciate it. He doesn't feel the same way. He, he's, he's not, he doesn't like fucking TF2, dude. It's Jay. Oh, it's Jay. What's the difference between hosting and rating? Like, what? Why, did, why is there even, like, a difference? Like, is rating, like, intended for me to be, like, raid time, and then you guys, like, type some stupid bullshit in his chat? Like, what the fuck is that? Like, why, why wouldn't I just host them? Oh, it puts us in the chat. Oh, my God. That's hype. <laughs> 